What's up, YouTube? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Prestige Reef Talk Show. <laughs> My name is Alex. I am Reef Talk, and with me, as always, is Smirkin Ryan from the UK's number one coral selling website, PrestigeReef.co.uk. Ryan, hello. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I laugh is because obviously we go from having a normal conversation, I know, a normal <laughs> level of voices, yeah. and then it's like, "What's up, YouTube?" is the next thing I hear. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so there's a big contrast, if you see what I mean. I don't think me, it anyway. really. I don't think it really suits the nature of the show or me to, to shout. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I just I, I started saying it because th it's cool when BRS Ryan said it, and now I kind of I'm addicted to saying it. So. Yes. Plus, someone told you not to do it anymore, which means you now have to do it forever. <laughs> but if I don't, say, it's, it's like an upbeat intro. And if I said if I if I was just like, yes, hello, uh, my name's Alex. You know, yes. Which then I do anyway. Anyway, hello, podcast crew. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, Right, today, so right, uh, today we're going to be talking about um, well, the usual nonsense, basically, uh, but my new tank. I can't remember if I've actually said on this live stream what the tank is, because the thing is, so I, 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 people kept asking me what tank you get, yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it under wraps until it arrives, then I'm going to announce it. Yeah. And then people, people started, like, I had loads of different people asking me, questions and they, uh, some people were saying what tank is it and that's easy it's just no can't tell you but then other people were asking me like probing questions and i was like oh okay yeah it's six foot is it is it a, is it a, an elos no it's not an elos and is it a, a water box no it's, and yeah. like no, and then i started to so i, I ended up telling eventually like people would come and buy corals from me and they'd be like what tank are you get and i'd be like oh yeah okay it's this and, and and then i started to lose track of who i told and who i hadn't yeah, and I started posting everywhere, and I've I think I think I've said I said on your video. You yeah, know, you did. Yeah, so trust me, you told loads of people on my video. <laughs> it's not a no, secret anymore. I can't remember if I've actually said, but it is a Red Sea Reefer 850S Gen 2. Sounds yeah. fancy. Yeah, I can't I can't remember what it's exactly. Called, but it's a six foot by two foot by two foot. It's actually it's six foot long exactly. Yeah. It's uh, 68 centimeters front to back, so that's two foot three inches two foot yeah two foot three inches and it's oh, 60 if, I, if only it was extra three inches you know like two Your, foot yeah. yeah it'll be the same as mine you know so but... it's 65 centimeters tall <laughs> there, there is a um uh there was a there was a water box one i was looking at that's the infinia some six foot infinia or something and that is wide as well same as same as your width um but it yeah. just the, the the red sea tanks i think the the plumbing and all that sort of stuff because they've updated it more recently than water box ones have i think the, the plumbing and the, the layout and all that is nicer and the thing that swung it for me on the on the red sea tank kind of getting straight into this <laughs> was the uh the they've got this there's a, a an, they call it a sump extension so you've got the main sump where you put all your skimmers and all that lot and then over the other side of the the, the wooden wall there's a sump extension that you can put you put a refugium in, you do whatever you want, but I'm going to use that as a frag tank. And okay. after I saw that, I was like, I really want it. So all other tanks, I was like, ah, but it doesn't have a frag tank. And you could, I was looking at the sumps for the, all the other tanks, trying to work out where I would put a frag tank, because you can do it in any sump. Yeah. But just having it completely separate just makes it so much easier, because you don't get algae on your skimmer from the light. And just... Have you got an example of, this, of the sump, just so I can see, like, picture what you're looking, what you're talking about? Um, I so I'll bring up the the photo from the the Red Sea um, website, but they're actually the sump is the sump is quite small for a six foot tank. I was going to say all they've done is made the sump smaller. <laughs> exactly, it's big enough to fit all the stuff you need. But I was I, and I was trying to work out. You can see dimensions. It doesn't make sense until it's in front of you. Yeah. And when I saw it, and I've, the sump isn't in place yet, by the way. But when I saw the uh, the sump gap, I was like, it's not that big a sump. It's got yeah. it's got room for. The, the skimmer, the phosphate reactor, um, and the, the filter roller, which is all I really need. But it's not massive. And for a six-foot tank, I would have thought you'd get this enormous um, uh, sump. But anyway, right, so I found the uh, the website. So I'm just going to go through the tedious it, process. I'm assuming it comes with an RO reservoir. No, it doesn't. Oh, that, doesn't it? No, no, no. no. But and so actually, I, I think I asked um, Red Sea about that. Oh, like a year or two ago. On oh, I just realised that's so they they can sell those canisters to you as well. That, so they they said they phased this out because I can't remember if it was just on the peninsula or all of their tanks. I think it was just a peninsula because I asked about it, 
and they said that I think they is this right? I might be mis misremembering, but lots of most of their customers said that they remove the in some yes, it was terrible anyway, exactly, yeah. and put in their own. And I would have used my own. Yeah. I prefer to have it out of something anyway. But anyway, um, whatever. And now I've lost my uh, my page, Ryan, because you're into. I was just I was filling in the in the time so that you could like find it. <laughs> Well, here it is. So this is uh, this. Yeah, that's the exact tank. In fact, this is the the eight fifty. Um, and then, so the, the main sump is on the left hand side there, where it says seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, so it's not massive. You've got this the space where the filter socks are. Obviously, I'll put a reef mat in there. Yeah. And then eleven is for skimmer and phosphate reactor, and the bit behind it is where your return goes. Oh, actually, there might be a bit more space. Anyway, whatever. No, it really is quite small, actually. It's not, it's not massive. It's big enough, but it's not it, like it, if you, I did think six foot tank, I was like, it's going to be massive. There's going to be so much space, but there isn't. Yeah. But that's because you get this and the trade-off is you get this de dedicated space you can use for refuge and whatever. And I'll be using for a frag tank. And I think yeah, that's yeah. the trade-off. The, de the other downside is that because that uh, frag tank sump is there, <clears throat> uh, the, this, the dry part of the cabinet is actually not very big. Okay. There's not loads of space for dosing containers for auto auto testers all these sorts of things it's weird that they've got like a tank connector between those two tanks rather than just having a baffle so there's a solid um wall between uh that uh, oh. that panel there that black um panel there that is a solid wall of uh, mdf or whatever it's a support i've seen in front of the tank yes correct yeah. yeah um so yeah so that's why they have that that system and i've been trying to wonder how i'll get water to flow properly between the two of them <laughs> yeah I think I'll just leave it. Just put a power head in the in the sump. Yeah. Bit, but I don't. I, I think it'll be okay. But the only thing that, although you you'll obviously have a roller mat on it, but um, mm -hmm. so I used to have a a frag rack in the sump of my thousand liter tank, and so much crud gets underneath the rack because obviously that's where all the like yeah. detritus and everything settles. It's the lowest flow area. Um, and it would probably be even worse if it's in that little if it, if the water has to go through that pipe. Although it might also stop the device going there as well. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you'll need you'll definitely need a power head either way. I'll probably I'll probably do a couple of powers. And the the downside of that is there's more plugs. <laughs> I had yeah. about twenty eight plugs on my last system. Yeah. Thirty plugs maybe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That is... You have you have more power heads than me and and I've got equal number of lights. But so, this is yeah. well no, but on the so on the last system I had um what did I have? What my light oh yeah, so I had four refactory lights, so there's four plugs. I had two uh reef bright strips, so that's six lights, six plugs for lights alone. Yeah. I had four MP forties, so that's ten uh, te power uh, light and flow, ten plugs. <laughs> Not even got started. Yeah. And then there's all sorts. So I was I was hoping to to reduce that, and I was trying to weigh up with the lights, for example. I'm going for the red sea lights, and I was trying to weigh up um, if I should. They recommend three on this on this size tank, the one sixties. Yeah. And I was trying to weigh up. I was like, three is good because that's one less plug. But I ended up going for four because uh, I prefer to have more coverage and well, yeah, I'd rather, yeah, yeah. rather run them lower. But uh, but that is another plug. And then I'll have two AI blades at some point, so that's two more plugs and. Ah, oh, it's plugs everywhere. <laughs> I have to put the blades on as well. Yeah, I don't know if they'll go up straight away. Yeah, um, I haven't bought them yet, but um, I will put them on at some point because I really like them. And that's because the only thing with the 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 my perfect combination that I've got on these two tanks. Oh, I've just realised I meant to do something. Is Kessel and AI blade, and it's Kessel for the shimmer, and AI blade for the the fluorescence. And Red Sea, excuse me, Red Sea shimmer is basically the same as Kessel shimmer. <clears throat> I used to have the Reef Lead ninety on my water box. And the only reason I got rid of it was because uh, the shimmer was great, but it didn't give blue really good blue fluorescence. So yeah. I swapped out for the, the refactory one, which did give good blue fluorescence. But now if you just put AI blades either side, you get the blue fluorescence anyway. So uh, what are you going to do? Are you are you going to do what I had done where you, the, the, the plugs are in the cabinet? Yes. In, they're gonna good. Be Thank God you said yes, because I was, I was going to fight you on it. Why? <laughs> Because it's so good having them in the cabinet as opposed to being on the wall behind the, the tank, if you see what I mean. Okay. Um, so it makes, like, that was one of the best things I did. And I assume you've not had that done before. You, that's not how your current, your old tank was like, is it? My old tank had, yeah, they were, they were always in the cabinet, yeah. Oh, were they? In oh, the dry section, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Because uh, I've got those DJ switches. Have you seen them? Yeah. Uh, 
there's eight um sockets they're they're, they're all lights and so you just you yeah yeah, yeah. But then they got orange yeah. switched on them yeah, yeah exactly yeah, right. yeah i know which ones yeah so i had i had three of those in my dry yeah. section of the cabinet and another one in a, a cabinet under the telly so the, there's, there's actually this is one of the things that people point out on instagram well, I, I posted a photo of it the other day of the, of the cabinet set up anyway um and there was just there's two there's two plugs just one double plug socket yeah and a few people were like Oh mate, what a lot that's a lot of uh, electricity for two plugs. Yeah. But I've got there there are two more that you can't see that I'll be using as well. So there's there's three double sockets I'll be running off. But um but nonetheless it's still too many plugs. <laughs> I think I've got like eight or nine plugs behind the water box. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Double sockets though. Yeah. Yeah. So what so 18 minor, overall? Yeah, I had I had loads of there's mm. 72 plugs in the coral farm. There's like you don't oh, see them because yeah. they're all in the roof. So all the wires oh, go good. get go in through holes into the roof because I wanted to make it look so you couldn't see them. Yeah, um, pretty sure there's a fire hazard. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> the but only yeah, thing with that is though, is how do you if you need to unplug something and get to it? Yes. How do, how do you do it? <clears throat> now that doesn't. Well, I have to literally climb up into the, it through a hatch into the roof, but it doesn't happen very often. Touch wood um, that I need to go. I probably would in the last four years. I've probably been up there. I know less than ten times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because everything's controlled by my phone. So if I want to turn something off, I just turn it off from my phone. No, I, I do find every now and then I need to change something around, though. And like with, with my last cabinet, my last tank, the dry cabinet had all these plugs in it, and it was a mess. And they were all yeah. tangled up. So it's not like you can just pull it out and there's three meters of cable to play with. They're all tangled into each other. So if you pull yeah. one thing, it like unplugs your skimmer and your, your return pump and all this. So I'm I'm keen to, to avoid that. And this is going to be a slow build. So like on YouTube what youtube likes is when you upload a video every week yeah. hey week one cabinet week two tank week three fish you know isn't there's not going to be like that <laughs> are you are you going to challenge me with regards yeah, to slow yeah. builds <laughs> i'm not going to be that slow <laughs> but i do like if when i got once i've got the tank in place the cabinet's built by the way it's in place uh but the tank is not in place yet and that's going to be a couple more weeks before that happens i've got an aquarium maintenance company um helping me get it in the house because it's bloody massive yeah um Although actually, you made a good point. I need to ask you if they're insured because <laughs> yes, that's really yes. that's, the, that's the main reason, isn't it? Is that to, is that, that is literally the main thing. <laughs> who doesn't break it, and if they break it, then you want. But anyway, whatever. Not just um, that, but yeah, also your windows as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's all very true. Anyone could take a window out, put it back. <laughs> it might not yeah. be. It might not but, be quite. <laughs> anyway, so it's it's going to be a couple of weeks before the tank goes in. But yeah. once it once it all goes in, if it, if it takes me actually, that might give me time to. No, I'm gonna, I'm not going to start plugging stuff in. If it takes me two weeks to plug in the skimmer and route the cable in the right place and then plug in everything and do it bit by bit so yeah. be it yeah it and won't that... you're going to do it all in the, in the same afternoon in an hour probably and go, yeah that'll do <laughs> and it'll be a mess but um in my head i've worked out what i want to do but yeah. with this sort of thing normally because it takes so long it's quite tedious to do that you start like yeah okay first one line that up nicely and yeah. then when you've got when you look across and you've got another 20 like, ah. so <laughs> it might end up like that but yeah that's not the plan the plan is to take my time but it doesn't really matter if there's if the plug it, it's going to be a bit of a nest of snakes anyway because with 20 odd cables 30 cables it's going to be a mess so yeah. i just like it i'd like it not to be a complete and utter mess but we'll see there you go um yeah, that's what, what have you noticed anything else that that's different or that you like about it at the moment obviously i know you've only built the stand you put you uh i saw yeah. the picture you had it backwards and upside down i wasn't sure if, <laughs> I if, if you were aware of that <laughs> i was aware of that so. um there's i don't think there's anything i've noticed that's that i didn't know beforehand the size was um not, not a surprise but given there's six feet of space wait till the tank's on because you think yeah. it's big now wait till the actual tank is on and full you're gonna go oh, wow no. this is way bigger than i thought well i've put the i've put the so the other thing on that people point out on instagram was it was it was re, the, the gap between the tank and my sofa was like a foot yeah and it was like oh that's you're gonna stub your toe on that and it's, it's like it's all right that's not in its final place so i've now yeah. put it in its final place so there is a big gap um and it actually doesn't look too bad but yeah when that when it when there's half a ton of glass on it <laughs> yeah well, I might get a call from Mrs. Reef Dork then going, you know how you convinced me to let this happen? Mm. <laughs> I, I was unaware it was going to be this big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and it's quite tall as well. So actually the cabinet is nice and low. 
Yeah. And that was one of the that was one of the key things. I had to have a tank that was low. And the fact that this this tank is 65 centimeters tall, so two foot two inches tall. Yeah. And ideally, I would have had it narrow, uh, shallower. I would have had it 60 centimeters or two feet tall. Yeah. That would have been perfect for me. Um, because I like to be able to see top down easily. But the fact that the um uh the 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 cabinet is so much shorter than my tank was before yeah. means it is still lower even factoring in the, the thing but i think it's um the, the the cabinet is 13 centimeters lower than my uh my my cabinet was so yeah, i'm still a really tall cabinet didn't you i remember 100 centimeters that was, it looked wicked and like if, if you set up as a, a, a proper peninsula in like a big house that having a tall imposing cabinet with a tall imposing yeah. tank would look really good but when you set up the way i did it just it was massive and it was so tall that you, it was a struggle i'm 61 and i struggled to see top down i had to use step ladder to see it top down yeah. so i wanted something shallower and you're never going to get proper low but um 87 centimeters instead of 100 centimeters for the uh, for the cabinet is much more palatable yeah but um what else have i noticed i haven't I'd not not nothing else really at the moment i've not got yeah. i've not um taken the tank out of the box i opened it to see if it was there i didn't yeah. do a proper check but i opened it to see if it was there had a look at some plumbing that's it um i had a bit of difficulty the, the putting the cabinet together i did it on my own it was actually pretty easy it took two evenings and i took my time yeah um but there are a couple of things I, it's so easy this is the same with any flat back furniture it's so easy easy to get one panel upside down or the wrong way around and then you only notice 10 steps later when it's like, screw it into that hole. And you're like, where's the hole? Oh, it's on the other bloody side. Yeah. And you've got to then undo it. And Jamie will probably be watching this going, why is Ryan nodding saying yes? Because I put his cabinet together. <laughs> oh, actually, that's a point. So I, I've been looking at the, the, uh, the, the, I'm using for the lighting rail. I've got the Red Sea, uh, I can't remember what it's called, pendant um, yeah. for, for that. And it's, uh, I, I was looking at um, how I would set that up and, I, I could do it, no problem. Yeah. But Jamie did yours, and he did. No, you worry. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I might give Jamie a shout. Hello. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, it just it, it looks really neat, and if yeah. I fit it up myself, it probably won't look so neat. Well, I can assure you, I'd give uh, five stars on um, Trust the Trader. So. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I can highly recommend. He will be listening to this at some point. Maybe not now. He might be flying. I think at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but no, it's it's good. It's um, it's exciting. It's uh, the only because the tank and the cabinet and everything. Oh, the good thing actually. That, so when I, I was talking to someone on Ultimate Reef before, and they were telling me some really useful information. So for a start, that on the on the actual tank, the plumbing sits about an inch below the glass, so you yeah. can't just rest it on the ground flat. Yeah, yeah, it has I to know. Be raised. That's, that's a really good tip. But the other thing you said was the cabinet um comes packed underneath the tank. Yeah. So what I thought I was going to have to do was get people around, lift up the tank, move the cabinet out, put the yeah. tank back down, and then uh, get it in the house and come back and do the tank another week. But actually, it's the other way around. So the, 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 the tank comes in a box. If you've ever bought a Red Sea or a water box tank, they come in this, uh, like an MDF box. And on top of that was the was the cabinet, the parts for the cabinet stand. Yeah. So it was really easy. To, it was massive box. And it was semi-heavy. But it was really easy to get that out, get that into the house, build it. And then the tank is a bit different, but but that was really good to know actually because I was I just it was going to be a nightmare otherwise. Yeah, I'm trying to remember how. I see. I don't think I had that. No, I, I definitely had the same issue where it had to be flat. I don't think with the water box. I know the Red Sea ones. They they are the 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 tank connectors are. You're correct. Yeah. You can't put it down, can you? Yeah, because yeah. I remember that with my because I that's the same even with the smaller ones. Um, yeah, and I'd forgotten that as well because I knew that because it was the same on my peninsula. Yeah, that, that, that was like five, six years ago. I set up, so I'd forgotten it. And he told me, I was like, ah, that's a good point. I don't think that's going to affect anything, but it's, just, it's stuff like that, logistics like that, that's really useful to know. Yeah, it just makes it more difficult to get in because you have to lift rather than just lifting it up and putting it onto the stand and then sliding it on. Yeah, you have you to lift it up right and get it place. all the way to the very back and then yeah. put it down, which is going to be difficult. But... Obviously, if it's up against a wall, the only thing that I will say, um, because is yours going right up against your wall? I've left a, the bigger gap, the biggest gap I can. So yeah. on the on the on the left hand side, because it's going in the corner, there's a gap big enough for me to, for me to fit down. Just yeah. about. <laughs> I won't be able to bend down and do stuff, but I'll be able to fit down there and hand down for algae scrapers. But on the back, the back wall, yeah. there's a gap of probably two three inches, and that's it. So there was one thing that I did wrong with the water box. It is mm. 
like probably an inch too close to I have a little tiny section of wall that comes out and it's probably and it's only about that lot wide and I can't get my hand down it it's so yeah. it's right up against that wall if I'd made it like just an inch wider it would have I could have easily cleaned the algae with a, an algae magnet but because it's right up against it I can't so I have to actually clean it from the inside and yeah. by clean it from the inside I mean not at all yeah exactly <laughs> so, so I, I i would probably just about be able to get i can fit an mp40 wet a uh, dry side down the back yeah if i want to i don't oh, you'll be fine then. To. but I, I getting my hand down to to scrape algae would be awkward but i don't yeah. tend to scrape the back glass anyway i just let coralline grow on it or whatever so yeah. uh, so i don't think i'd be uh, in an ideal world you'd have a, a space around every single you, you'd be able to walk around the entire tank yeah, yeah, but you but you want it flat up against the wall enough so that it looks slick. Yeah, but and not too far that it looks a bit silly. But you do want enough gap to to do stuff. But the the annoying thing was with my peninsula, the gap that that was behind the tank was big enough that I could reach most of the way down, but I couldn't fit like my chest wouldn't fit in. So the side of the tank on this one where it's so those muscles, eh? Yeah, so I, I'm ripped. So, but the side of the tank now it will be big enough, so my chest will fit in. Yeah, <laughs> unless I get fatter, which is you know <laughs> likely to happen. Just to clarify, um, a tank where you can get all the way around it is not the ideal situation because then you have four panels of glass you have to clean. <laughs> no, no, this is true. I just, I just mean gap for maintenance yeah. um, gap. But um, that's the one yeah. thing I would do if I if I redid the coral farm. Uh, I would re. So there's always things that you don't think about. I would rethink about um, the space between the frag racks and the glass so that I could easily clean them. Yeah. That's, that's the one, that's one, there's, there's only two or three things that I would 100% change if I went bigger. And do you know what's funny? I am, I've all, all, every day at the moment, I think, I wonder how I could go bigger. I don't know why. <laughs> I, it's just something that's in my mind at the moment. Were you, there was a, um, a, a commercial development on your housing estate. Wasn't yeah, there? I know. Yeah. You were, you were asking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just intrigued, but I don't know why I, I, I want to go bigger because I think I said to you that I, I'm not utilizing the trays the best I can as it is because there's some trays where I could clear some out. So before going bigger, I should probably make sure it's 100% utilized rather than like 80% utilized. Yeah, probably. So. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I can't remember. Probably interesting and witty, but you'll have to wait. As, as always. As always. Um, but yeah, so the, with the, with it was something to do with the farm and the, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think that will ever happen actually? Do you think you'll ever actually upgrade the farm or will you just stay with it as is uh no it will get bigger at some point definitely 100 percent, it will get bigger at some point um but it will I, I think i'd have to move i think is what's likely okay. would happen <clears throat> because i would i i would move to somewhere with a, a bigger garage essentially um when i bought this house and i went into the sales office they said to me how many bedrooms how many bathrooms i said don't care just give me one with a garage <laughs> yeah, yeah well next time i'll go i don't care just give me one with a double carriage yeah <laughs> and that's how that's um that's how i'll upgrade but can you i can't imagine having to move this can you, can you imagine like i i think i would probably sell everything i think yeah. i would probably do i, I um, moved i moved a 100 liter um nano tank yeah 50 miles and yeah. it was the worst day of my life. So, and, and I had like 10 corals in it and five yeah. fish. So moving that farm, the only way you could do it really would be to keep your house, buy another house. I know. that is literally, <laughs> and, what... and then move it across uh, <laughs> over a period of six months. Or... <laughs> you know, it's funny. It actually gives me anxiety. I think about this all the time. Like, yeah. what am I going to do when I, like, when I want, want to move house? Because obviously you have to get out of the house by usually by like one o'clock or something or 12. And then you move into your new house. So I have like 12 hours <laughs> or like, or, or whatever. Yeah. Even if it was 24 hours, I still couldn't move it. No way. So, but isn't it funny how I still, how it gives me anxiety, even though, I, even though I have no plans of moving, mm. but I do think about it all the time, actually. So interesting. Yeah. I'm not sure why. I think it's the same as with you, with your tank. You'll go, oh, I didn't like that about my old tank. So I want to do this. And I'm thinking, I don't like the stand. So I want to get a new stand and I don't like this about it. So I want to do this about it. Um, but obviously for me to do that, I have to a whole new building rather than a whole new mm. tank. That's what I was going to ask. W would you ever replace all of the um, the frag uh, racks to, to make them slightly smaller so it's easier to do the algae scraper? Might cost uh, a couple of grand, but would it be worth it? 
Um, what I would, what I actually would probably, if if I, n not now, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it um, with this with this farm. Um, if I went bigger, what I would do is I would just order the tanks slightly, like a couple of inches wider, so I could yeah. still use the frag racks. <laughs> um, although the I would actually have the tanks very differently as well. I'd have long tanks, much longer rather than right, short okay. ones. Um, that's yeah, that's probably what I would. But you, have you got the space for longer? Oh wait, in my new double garage, definitely yes. <laughs> so okay. yeah, I couldn't I couldn't make these longer. It's a tight fit having three people in there sometimes. So I've actually had a quite a busy weekend this weekend, okay. um, because yeah, you well you you probably saw I put out a thing saying I'm trying to get rid of big colonies. You were the reason I did this because sometimes you come to the farm and you go, yeah, I'm not really sure I'm happy about this, Brian. <laughs> so then the next day I I fix it Just and plant then, a seed. Yeah, and then you you sort of when I can't remember what you said. It, you said it. maybe I said it to you. I can't actually remember. But oh, I was talking about. I remember I was, we were talking about. Wouldn't it be great if everything was in rows? So you had five rows of Cyphastria, green, red, blue, pink, yellow, and then yeah. five rows of, uh, of yeah. whatever you know. And, and... Do you see how he manipulates me? It's like emotional, <laughs> like like emotional Abuse. manipulation. Yeah. He doesn't go. You need to sort out these trays. He goes. Wouldn't it be nice if you just did this? Yeah. Just... <laughs> so, um, he, so yeah. I started thinking after that, and then the next day I put a post out saying, like, who wants some big colonies? Now, it's really interesting. Yeah, that. Although that picture is, like, vastly warped, and I don't know why Instagram you were saying, changed. Yeah, you messaged it's, me asking me if Instagram uh, uh, filters my photos. It doesn't. Yeah, and I hate it that it's like that because I'm no, I, like, I don't put pictures out like that, do mm. I? But, no. um, but, yeah, so I've had loads of people this weekend. What is interesting is, so... I had I had probably like sixty people contact me. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, I had loads of people contact me um, about it. And some people, I sent everyone the same message where I went, "Look, come to the farm. I promise you." Like, because everyone goes, "Oh, what's the prices? What's for sale?" Whatever. I said, "Look, here's all the pictures." I sent them like fifteen pictures. I said, "Come to the farm. Don't worry about about the prices. Like, like you tell me what you want, and then we'll cut off a bit that that you're happy with." And so those people came. And those people left with far better bits than they expected, okay. I believe. Yeah. So, so like someone, uh, you know, I got that massive acro. Um, they got, they said, "How much do you want to spend?" I said, and they said, "Love oh, thirty quid." And then they got a piece that's like the size of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so for thirty quid. So, uh, so all the people that were made it more difficult were going. I'm not coming unless you actually give me a specific price and a specific size of the frag I'm going to be getting or whatever. <laughs> have actually like missed out because all the good like. The, the people that just came and made it easy for me. Yeah. It's it's difficult because I can't cut. I don't know what sort of things are, they're going to come off the trays in whatever sizes pieces they're going to come off. Yeah. I mean. Okay. So I can't say, yeah, you can have this piece because it might break into four or five pieces. Yeah, I see. Okay. Um, it's funny because I'd be like the, the awkward people who's like, oh, I, I like certainty. I like to know. <laughs> I know. I know. But some of some people live like five minutes. Away, so what's the hard? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's true, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the, as I said, I had, and you know, it's funny. It doesn't look any different. So I had loads of people this weekend. Yeah, yeah. It barely looks any different. And I realized why. It's because obviously the, 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 the corals are growing like 10 frags off like one or two stalks because they were originally worth frags themselves so when you uh take them out you're not clearing a, a piece on the tray you're clearing the air above the piece on the tray yeah, you see what I mean? okay. <laughs> so it still yeah it still looks like there's plenty T to get on with. part of garden says that he says people will come along and take a, like a truckload of corals and you wouldn't know that, they, that yeah. they've been <laughs> and because the other thing is if it's a, if it's a piece of coral that i like really want to get rid of because it's it's like because that was the other thing people going how much is the um the hollywood stunner chalice i'm like well the hollywood stunner chalice as you've seen it is about two feet wide circle <laughs> so how do, massive so how do i price that if you see what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah so and i just break pieces off and then people were getting pieces that were like this i'm like there you go that's 10 quid size of your head yeah yes <laughs> yeah, because yeah. It, it suits me to get rid of it yeah yeah so yeah. Um, and I will get back to the people. I said to everyone, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let all the people who come who just want to turn up first and take what they want um, first. And then after that, I will come back to the people who like want specific prices of things, because then I'll be able to like break pieces off and go like this piece is going to be this 
amount for this for this exact piece because i'll have room if you see what i mean mm. um yeah so if you trust sometimes you get better but i i'm the same i'm like you <laughs> where i would want to know exactly <laughs> especially if you don't know so actually the, when when you get to know you and you've bought mm. from you a couple of times yeah that's the sort of thing you do quite quite often yeah but as a customer if you've never used if a customer's never used you before they don't know you're like that yeah they might just think you're you're being tight you know you're not trying to rip them off or whatever but you you might be uh looking after yourself but that's not really the way you do it so the no, people who know that <laughs> what happens is I, I go how like so someone said to me today they wanted a piece of digitata and i said how much how much do you, are you looking to spend they went oh i don't know i can't remember what they said but like uh, 20 quid and i go okay so if i cut this amount off for you mm. is that worth 20 quid for you and they went yeah that's fine so so yeah. then the customer is always happy if you see what i mean because they're picking the size of the frag now if someone tried to take advantage and went oh no i want the whole thing like yeah. it's a bit different yeah. but for, people, for a quid, yeah yeah but people don't usually do that if you see what i mean well, i bet people normally go the other way and they're like, oh you can't give me that much oh, I'll, I'll buy something else and um no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want people to leave feeling happy if you see what I mean. I want them to go because if they feel leave feeling like annoyed, they won't come back. And I want people yeah, to come back yeah, again yeah. every weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then I won't have this problem of too many corals. This is very true. But I think you get um I got some undata from you ages ago, I think. And yes. I had a nice piece that was like the size of your forearms, it, like literally it was a, like a there. More than a foot long is massive. Yeah. Right? Well that went to someone I think for like 10 20 quid i think for, for that oh, yeah this is what i mean beeping hell that's but, and that's so undata is such an <laughs> underrated coral like, i got rid of it but only because yeah. it was surrounded by similar colored corals but yeah. it was so, that was the that was the that was my favorite monty i prefer yeah. that to tropic thunder because tropic thunder is horrible <laughs> but I, that was my favorite of all the monties it's such a nice coral really yeah. like a slightly unusual color with like white polyps it's nice i no, I prefer Tropic oh, I Thunder to that. If I'm honest, it's, oh, it's I love bit, it. It's just a bit green. Like but that's a, the only. Th that's the only problem with it is it's the same color as every other Monty, <laughs> basically. Well, you know, more or less, it's <laughs> a shade of green. But I, just, I love Undato. I think it's a really nice coral. Ten quid but for that is mental. I, I do that with <laughs> with with the um when when people order as well. If it will fit in a frag pot, and I've got a massive piece, of, like so, I've still got a two foot piece of Undato. So it didn't matter that I've already given the one foot piece away, basically. Yeah. So if, if people order on data, although there's a frag picture on the website that's like this, the last person that ordered it got a piece that's like this. Well, that's the, the problem with... Um, uh, so Signature Frags did an update. He does updates every now and yeah. then. He did a website update on Saturday. Yeah. And the problem with, uh, with... And I see this in your photos as well. And I'm not criticizing either of you, obviously. But he'll post a photo and it'll be of, uh, of a frag that's been cut a month ago or something like that yeah and so it's kind of semi-based out and just looks relatively small-ish same as same as you yeah and then actually when you see it it's not like that coral isn't going to sell the same day some of them might yeah. be but they're not all going to sell so, so it'll probably be three months later and it's twice the size yeah but when but it's like it's not neither of you you couldn't update that photo every week could you it'd be no you'd need so to, I, I, I don't usually job. <laughs> I, I know he does that because like i i could definitely sell more corals if i did what you see what you get but the amount of time to do a what you see what you get on a digitata when they all look yeah. roughly exactly the same it's not worth doing so it's I'd funny because have... it doesn't actually matter what the frag looks like especially with a monty because yeah. within within three days it's going to be five times the size <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um yeah. so but but it's, whenever i'm at a coral shop i will always choose the one that looks the nicest and everyone does this i'm sure yeah but it doesn't make an ounce of difference because <laughs> in six months time you won't you won't know <laughs> i see this every time someone comes to the farm they're like well not every time a lot of people just go yeah. oh, i just pick whichever one you want to pick yeah. and i usually just pick the biggest one and put it in there um but sometimes you'll see people and they're like oh can i have the one that's four back and two to the right and i'm like if all the other corals weren't here like so if you couldn't see all the other all the other different shapes of that frag you would be happy with any of them if you see what i mean it's only because you can see the other ones that, that it makes a difference, even though they're all roughly the same size. So I, I'm, I'm basically saying, yes, I agree with you that like it doesn't it's not it doesn't make a difference. But if 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 one's like, oh, am I boring it? <laughs> Just tired. <laughs> I know <laughs> if one of them's like this and one of them's like this, then obviously yeah. it's a big difference. But if they're all like pretty much the same within like 10 percent, I, I, I sometimes I'm like, why do people put so much attention into what they're getting? 
so reef keeper moss end has this is where i got the idea of your all your corals in a row so i don't know six yeah. months a year ago they did a complete um rehash of all their coral trays and they made everything much neater all it's all priced so you can see what the price so good having stuff priced it's, it's yeah like, yeah loads no, of shops don't, don't and anyway it was all neat and, and it looked wicked and now they've got like 10 frags in a row and I, i'll do a hybrid of that so if it's if they're all the same i'll be like that one i'll do whatever yeah, and, yeah or just or you choose you know whatever but sometimes there'll be five let's say and some are maybe there's not as based out as the other or what that one's a bit retracted or whatever so then i'll choose specifically but yeah i think sometimes it's worth it but yeah the chances are though if the other four weren't there you would still have taken that yeah. one oh, piece completely. that wasn't quite based out <laughs> enough if you see what i mean yeah exactly that's what i was trying to get at earlier i see um what was i going to say uh oh yes so conscientious reefer i meant to um say this at the start he says did red sea send you the tank or did you buy it with your own money i was sent it so thanks for um for reminding me on that one so i sent the tank anything you see that was red sea in my uh videos photos or whatever you should assume that it was given to me for free um because they gave me the tank the lights the uh reef mat and then a bunch, no other equipment. Uh, I've got my own skimmer. I've got my own return bumper and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then some other stuff like the, the, the couple of test kits and the reef mature kit, that like the ammonia cycling stuff. What else? And they're going to send me some um, two-part dosing solutions. But basically, if you see anything on that tank that is Red Sea, you should assume I've bought it. And then factor that in objectivity-wise as you wish. You should assume that you didn't buy it. You said you, you said you said. Oh, sorry. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just um, two contradicting statements. Who, who yeah. asked that question? Originally, just... reefer. Oh, oh okay. on here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, so, cause, so Island Reef has just, has just responded saying, given for free, damn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people, like, I will come to Alex's... Um, it's, like, it's not a defense because it's, it's, it doesn't need to be defended. Um, a huge amount of work goes into running a YouTube channel, a tremendous amount of work. It is done for love, not for money, I can assure you. <laughs> I think the, re the reason people say that is because, so and a, a few people say that, and it's not just me, it's like whoever gets a tank, it's like, ah, oh, I wish it, was, it wasn't sponsored or whatever, because it, it's, it removes some portion of objectivity. I will always do my best to be, to tell you the good and the bad, um, and be completely objective. And I like to think actually my reviews are complete down the line. They talk about good things and bad things. I don't just say it's good, you should buy it. So I'll always do my best to do that. But if an aquarium company gives you a, a tank, there's going to be some part of you that is not uh, as objective as you would be if you bought it yourself. And it, it might be like a small thing that you think, ah, I'm not going to say that because it was a five grand tank and it was free. Whereas if it was, if it was your own stuff, you'd moan about it more. So I think that's why people say it because they're like yeah. oh, i just wish it was you know a bit more independent or whatever but i don't think it's your responsibility to give an opinion i think it's your responsibility as some because they are they come to people like us for advertising so ah. we, i think that we are responsible to show what a product does but not necessarily give an opinion if we don't want to that's I, my I, view. I so i take a different view i i do and on all my reviews, I give an opinion on it. I, at the end of the day, what I what I think of something isn't the most important thing. So 90% of the video is the obje objective things. This is what it does. Yeah. These are the things that are good and bad. But in my opinion, at the end, doesn't really matter. But I'll generally give it anyway. But I do think it's useful. And I do. I, I don't like, I don't see, if someone gives me something for free, I don't see that as advertising. It is because they wouldn't give it to oh, you it is. Otherwise, I wouldn't <laughs> but, give it to you <laughs> but I, I don't see myself as responsible to advertise that product yeah so if someone sends me something and they might think we're going to send this because we're going to get advertising i'm thinking i'm going to i'm going to get this because i'm going to review it yeah so i don't i don't think of myself as advertising i'm i'm not an extension of your marketing team you yeah, give me something yeah. and, and my duty is to to the to the viewer to say is it good is it bad oh well most stuff is you and I do, do the same. If we got something that's rubbish, we don't want it, so we send it back. Yeah, true, true. So it's so it's normally going to be look. This is good, but these are the things you need to know about it that that might be deal breakers for you. I think it's good, but you might not like that. Like if it's a light, you might not like because it's too blue or the power cable's too short, all those sorts of things. So I yeah. do see it as a responsibility to to talk about it, and I don't think you can realistically. I don't think you can not give an opinion. Like if I if I was going to say, you know what, I've got that tank. And I'm just not going to give an opinion. 
yeah. I have opinions. And like I can't, I'm a human being. And if I like something or I don't like something, I'm going to talk about it. You can't just, you can't just be quiet, you know, and be a robot. Like, yeah, yeah, so. that's, that's, I see what you mean. But anyway, um, but yeah, so hang on a second, Smith, follow up on that point. It's not the it's not the inferred loss of objectivity. It separates you from the viewers. Okay, people like to fantasize that I could have that tank just like that. He's just like me. Yeah, I see that. But the, yeah, that's just how that's how YouTube works at the end of the day, isn't it? True. So, True. Um, anyway, have you had, have you, we've not really talked about your weekend reefing. Have you talked, have you got anything uh, to share? That, so, the quarantine for those fish is almost coming to an end. That's how long they've been quarantined for. You <laughs> not caught. The, not the assessor. Oh. No. Not the assessor. No. Are you the bad to bring I, the fish? I, the I am. I thought you'd um I thought you'd quarant I thought you had quarantined all the fish. No, so they've all quar they've all been in quarantine, but it takes a month to quarantine them, doesn't it? Oh, I thought so, they were all treated and done. Okay. Yeah, so they've all been treated, but the it obviously they're in treatment for an entire month. So yeah. it, it started a month ago in three days' time. So like the King Eye and the Yellow Tang and the Majestic have all been through quarantine. I'm I'm not sure. Do I leave them in copper? Because they're fine in copper. Like they've been fine in it for a month. So how long do I leave? They're not, they're, they're all eating. They're all happy. They get fed twice a day. <laughs> Pun? What does humble fish say? Follow that. Uh, <laughs> well, you no, know, generally people are desperate to get fish out of quarantine, aren't they? And put yeah, them straight yeah. into the tank. Now, the other option is I can literally take all the water out and just replace it with normal water that has no copper in it. Yeah. Which is probably the the right thing to do. Um, I might leave them slightly longer. So I, I might leave them for 40 days rather than 30 days um, just because of obviously the issue that I had before where something's obviously snuck through. Mm -hmm. I've definitely been a lot more diligent where I'm constantly testing the copper. Um, even though copper doesn't change, like the level, oh, really? um, no, with copper power, it stays the same. Oh, yeah, because you specifically chose copper power because others apparently fluctuate or get yes. bound up or something. Yeah. Or... So, the, so that, that's basically the reason I did it. Now, if um, the only thing I could think of, obviously, I'm topping up the water manually, uh, like the RO water, and I'm literally using a watering can. And the uh, so I wonder if it was right on the edge of what was say like what, what will kill parasites. Mm. Although it wasn't really, cause it was like 2.2 .2 or something or 2.3. And I think two is what, what will kill them. And mm. I, and obviously when I'm putting in the RO water, if I put too much in, it dilutes the copper, doesn't it? And I just right. wonder if that's how something snuck through. Maybe. Oh, I see. Okay. But, cause other than that, I, I literally cannot work out how I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Came so, on, a, on a snail or something. Possibly. I don't yeah. know. But so they, I, I'd be tempted to take them out of copper. Yeah. I, I, this is, I, this is, I don't know squat about quarantining, but it feels like why, or even though they're fine, you've already said that their appetites were suppressed, and why keep them in copper uh, longer no, than they need to? You know? No, so their appetites are fine. It was the fact I couldn't feed as much food because they're all in a small tank. Oh, I think it, when you first move them in, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah they don't fine, eat as much, okay. yeah. Um, and then obviously I have a second quarantine tank, which has now only been going for a week, which has the mm. assessor in it. Um, and again, that it seems to be fine. Um, there's you, you were going to get a picture of, I don't know if you're going to get up. Someone, someone commented on that picture saying that it looks like it's starving. That fish is not starving. I know it looks like it is, but it's not. It's how that's it's a, sitting in the net. So when I pulled this up a second ago, I thought that's a really good example of a dead of fish. <laughs> <laughs> no, of of what to look for in a in a thin fish because that fish to most people you yeah. look at that and you'd be like it's tube shaped it's fine yeah. but this is the bit here I promise is the you. cause for concern oh, no I'm not saying it is but th so, this is the this is the part on, on when when fish are thin of, yeah. like so, the lateral like they're squished up like that when they're really thin but that bit there is the bit that's easy to miss and that yeah. if if that's if if you see that's really dented in. I don't know if you can skin. see this, or you won't be able to. But that picture was that picture was taken like literally, probably a minute later, and you can see it doesn't have. Oh, you that's can't a see it. Terrible probably. photo. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I didn't put it on Instagram. But yeah, yeah, every yeah. other picture of that fish, um, you've you've got rid of yourself. I don't know if you know that. Oh every yeah, other, sorry, oh, I meant to bring myself back. <laughs> yeah, every other picture <laughs> of that fish is like that. Was the problem with it? I couldn't starve it because it was eating stuff in the tank, yeah. so it wouldn't go in the trap because of that reason. But you um, caught but, it. Yeah, but that that picture, um, so, uh, someone went, oh, you need to you need to feed that fish. And I'm like, no, hey, the fish is fine. It's just how the picture makes it look. But I understand why it looks like that. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna ask something in the chat. We'll come back onto that because Jay okay. uh, Jay's, Jay's real reef um, said sponsored by Red Sea. That's awesome, mate. Well deserved. Red Sea are a brilliant company. So a couple of things on that. First off, I love Red Sea. I that I really enjoy working with them. There are some companies who approach you normally the small companies. Um, who it's a bit of a pain in the ass to work with them. Red Sea are brilliant. They're, I like the nice people, very good at what they do, intelligent. I just I like dealing with them. So uh, I agree, and I, I I like them. But the point of the reason I wanted to pull, pull this up was sponsored by Red Sea, and someone in on my Instagram page said, "Is this a sponsored build?" And I said, "Well, they're not paying me, but and they're not. <laughs> I don't get any cash, but they've given it to me for free." And I personally, and I'm going to ask you guys in the chat and in the comments what you think. If if someone gives if someone gives me a product for free, yeah, I don't consider that to be sponsored. And but this is what I think is a grey area. What is it? Because, then? Well, so it's well, this is the thing. I, the sponsorship to me means you've been paid. You've got you've got either you're on commission or you've got yeah, yeah. you get given cash. And so, but because it's a, so, I don't put that little banner up. The only time you'll ever see on my videos the banner that says this includes paid promotion yeah. is if I've been paid cash money. Yeah. And I think that's only two videos ever. Oh, actually, no. Four uh, four videos with the Reef Casa and then the, the Abyss, um, the uh, Purple Yerple Tank. Yeah. So so five videos technically, but two because they were one was a build series. But I so I only ever put that banner up paid promotion if I've been paid money. Because I don't think if I if I say sponsorship, that means like they they I feel like I'm in their pocket almost and like I owe them something whereas if I get given something for free I don't think of that as sponsored so I don't put up but instead because people will think there's some kind of compromise there instead I say in the video this was given to me for free yeah because then I think that's the clearest way possible and then you because I just think it's misleading especially if you just say like if I did a review and I don't say anything and I just put the banner up that says include pay promotion what does that mean? Does that mean that this is an advert or does it yeah. mean that, um, and what, like, if you talk about three things, what were you given for free? Was it all, was it, you know, but that's what do you, what do you, what's your take on that? If, if some, and in just, the chat, I'm in the chat, free, yeah. if, if someone's, if, if a YouTuber is given something for free, me, anybody, doesn't matter who, do you think that is sponsored? Is Tell it, me what you think. And what I've seen in the chat so far, it is I very, it's um, <laughs> it's very mixed. <laughs> So some people say it's a review and it's not sponsored. Some people say it is sponsored. Marketing, yeah, paid because it's a free tank. Yeah, I get, I get the, I get the viewpoint. And it's an expensive. Mine it's, was expensive tank. It's so, definitely yeah. marketing because otherwise they would give everyone a free tank, or they'd give some random person a free tank that hasn't doesn't have as many followers as you. But it's the company marketing. I'm not marketing. I'm not. I. Yeah. I don't. My purpose is they're they're doing the marketing. I'm not trying to persuade you to buy a tank. Yeah. Or to like, if I make a product with you, I'm not trying to persuade you to buy that product unless I think it's brilliant. I like um, Alex Smith's response. Is is that is that your is that another account of yours? It's under uh, Smith. <laughs> could be actually. Yeah, we're <laughs> hung up on terminology. You've nailed it. Uh, say the tank was free, which you have. People are going to draw their own conclusions, yeah. and that's but that's why it's so important to say whatever you say, whether it's the banner, whether you say it was free, whether you say thanks for hooking me up or whatever that's why it's important because the viewer needs to be able to know that so they can draw their own conclusions because people i think most people who watch my reviews know or at least think yeah he's being he's down the line because he he tells the good and the bad and he yeah. says that he's not going to be biased and all that sort of stuff but there are plenty of people who will watch it and they'll be like no you've been given it for free therefore i'm not going to believe a word you say and it's you as a viewer you need to be able to make your own mind up it don't, it doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum yeah, that's why you need to know. So it doesn't matter how you tell the viewer; you got to tell the viewer somehow. Um, what else? My personal opinion: if you can't give it your honest opinion on the product, that's what I don't like. Yeah. So I've never had anything, even Red Sea, with this. This is an expensive tank, very expensive tank indeed, and all the lights and all that sort of stuff. A lot of money. They haven't asked me. Uh, can you make sure that you say X, Y, and Z, or we don't, don't want you to say this? I've never had anyone do that with me. I've never had anyone come to me and say, you need to say this, otherwise you can't have it. Have you had that? I'm just trying to think. I don't think so. Sometimes um... sometimes I will contact... Uh, what, I will either contact the, um, the company and I'll say, can you tell me your key points about like your product? Because just in case they know something I might miss. Mm -hmm. For example, like let's say we're talking about like the Ecotech quiet drive thing. I don't yeah. know what a quiet drive is. 
<laughs> so I can go, can you tell me what that is? So I can put that into completely, the video yeah, because yeah, that's completely. like, that's an important piece of information. Otherwise I won't know. Um, but no one has ever said to me, um, like you have to do this or you have to say this. No, in fact, no, no one has ever said to me, I have to say only good things or, or, or and no bad things or anything. Because if they said that, I would take it. <laughs> the, no, there have been a couple of times when I've I've um, phoned companies up and I've said, this thing you've sent me, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Do you want me to make the video? And they say, no, don't worry about it. Send it back. Thanks for your time, that sort of thing. But I don't actually think I've ever been asked. I can't remember though. I've got a bad memory. <laughs> and it might there might be there might have been one company like years ago that's that said something, but I don't remember ever being asked. No one's ever lent on me. Yeah, that's true. You, yeah. Les's tank sponsored by Reef Dog because he got some macros from you, didn't he? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. How are they doing, by the way, Les? They're really nice. Um, Gary McConnell doesn't see any issue uh, and trust your opinion. Yeah. The only the only thing is I I don't I don't like it when people um, there are sometimes people comment and they say I bought this because of you. Yeah. And that that, that sounds like a good thing, and that sounds like the sort of thing that I would go, oh, wicked. But occasionally. I do think that, like the uh, the the um, what was it, the auto water changer refloat one? Yeah, that was not sponsored. I paid for that. I'd had it for years, and when people said, "Oh, I love this," I bought it. I'm like, "Yeah," because it's it's great. I've shared it with you. You found out about it, and it's yeah. brilliant. But I generally don't like it. If someone watches a, a review and they say, "I bought this because of you," I think I wasn't trying to persuade you to buy it. Yeah, if yeah. You, you know, I was trying to tell you the things you need to make know to make your own decision. So I'm always like, ah. <laughs> I hope that they're just like, oh, great. I watched this video. Now I know the bad things. They don't bother me. So it's cool. But do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a weird like that, though. <laughs> no, if I go to, on to YouTube to find out something about a product, I'm only interested in what it does. I don't really care about what the person thinks about it. So obviously, yeah. I, I bought a printer the other day, didn't I? I don't care what the person who's on the video tells me like if they like i only care what it does <laughs> the, the thing is so, so i bought a 3d printer as well actually and this was it was a creality end of three which is a really popular uh, beginner one and yeah. i watched a load of videos and they they talked about it and the, one of the things was the, the noise and there was one video in particular they said oh here's a video here's a clip of the of the fan noise and it was quiet yeah and i and when i got it it was it was like a bloody airplane taking off it was so bad I, I wrote to the, the the maker and I was like, I think I might have a faulty one. Is this right? Yeah. And I posted on a forum on the Facebook group and they were like, no, that's just what it's like. And so I felt like that video had been edited to, so he he hadn't told me what it was like. So actually that pissed me off because I was like, there's no way that was down the line. Yeah, see that, so sound <sighs> is, is a hard thing to show True. on a video and, because it depends on what the setting of the person's like that was watching it on if you see what and i mean and people have different levels of hearing yes and also yeah. uh, some some noises bother some people some uh, like fan from tidal gardens always says he's a noise psycho so a yeah. tiny bit of noise would bother him whereas other people are like yeah, whatever but anyway um more stuff on this so james says you've been paid in kind you wanted a new tank and they can mark it through you i would call it sponsorship but you've been transparent in saying that you've you've had it for free, and that's the the so that's why people think it's paid. I think actually, I think technically, YouTube rules say if you've been given something, it should say to. paid promotion. I don't know about that uh, because if you've been it's given, you have to say. In. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I think you have to do the paid promotion there. I think that's right because it's they consider it payment in kind. Yeah. I just don't because I think it's ambiguous. So I would prefer to to say this was free because <laughs> then you know yeah. exactly. But um any other opinions and i'm happy to be challenged on this by the way it's not a sponsor it's a free tank all good if you if you genuine and this is not just fishing for compliments if you think that i'm doing something wrong tell me because it'd be good to know but uh, i think everybody's all good i didn't see any i might have missed some comments it's so <laughs> difficult to, to keep up with the comments but and uh, the, well the only other part of my my week in reefing while you're reading oh, the comments yes. <laughs> and it's not my it's not my week in reefing really it's actually my future week in reefing i'm going to london zoo tomorrow and london zoo have an aquarium there and yeah. when i was there before like a long time ago it was actually a very very good aquarium um i don't know if it's still the same um but i'm i'm looking forward to that the the, I told I told Reef Talk this just before the live stream, and I don't. It's probably irrelevant. You'll find it boring. But London Zoo claims to be the world's first aquarium, yeah, um, because it was set up in 1852. Can you imagine what it would have been like back then? Shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. There probably have been a lot of dead things. Um, and but the other aquarium, it's like a rival aquarium, which is Brighton Aquarium, also claims to be the world's first aquarium, even Public though that was aquarium. In, 
for, yeah, first public. Well, I assume London Zoo was the per- first public aquarium. Yeah, yeah, I, but I mean, like the first aquarium was probably some dickhead at his house. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. If some, it would have been, a, it would have been a Victorian person, probably. Yeah, He's, it was. So I, I did a video that was, uh, that was a load of random facts, and one, I looked it up, and it was, uh, it there was this really old Victorian um, fish tank. It yeah, it's really weird. Have you yeah, seen them where they've got the metal? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, it. The, like really the ornate. Of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. assuming that's how they were held together back then because they didn't have Probably. silicon. I think. Oh, that's the point. Yeah, they I don't. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So according to the internet, yeah, London Zoo was the first public aquarium. So Brighton Zoo are, are lying. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brighton claimed to be the 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 longest running aquarium, I think, or something like that. But okay. yeah, I, I remember they had um, when I was there last time. They had massive um, uh, angelfish in an all SPS tank, like a Montepora. It was eating the Montepora, like <laughs> like properly going for it. Okay. But there was so much of it, it was it wasn't even making Good a money. dent. So I, I wonder if it will be like that. I was a bit disappointed when I went to the London Aquarium the other day, just because I was like, Aptasia everywhere, and <laughs> yeah, and it's not just that. It's like it wasn't it wasn't really anything special. I think they sort of focused on the sharks and stuff like that, but they didn't really like, there was like one reef tank there and it was like 50%. Um, <laughs> what was it? Uh, Hollywood stunner. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it like this 12 foot reef tank with like this massive, massive piece of Hollywood stunner. I was just like, mm. they didn't, I don't think they've done it the best they could do it. But it's funny though, because pe- normal people, not like nerds like us, yes. they, all they, they say that, like, oh, that's amazing. I remember when, like, the, when I was looking into, before I started uh, a saltwater tank and I was like, I'm going to do it. I need to research it. There were charter house aquatics used to be in, in, uh, Haggerston in London and yeah. they were in this, this, uh, the rail, rail arch. arch. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. looked amazing. Really cool building. And they had a few display tanks and I've, I took a photo of the display tank and I was like, that is what I want. And yeah. It was just two rock islands covered in zoas and not like nice, just crap, like Vietnam zoas, boring, bland ones. Yeah. And to me at the time, I was like, that's the coolest thing in the world. So when you go into London, uh, Brighton, London uh, Aquarium, whatever, as as a normal person, not yeah. a, like a, 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 a professional coral farmer, you're like, wow, look at the big coral there. It's huge and it's green. <laughs> However, when you were, when I went to Sydney Aquarium, which is run by the same people, they're both the Sea Life Center. Um, Sydney Aquarium was an exception when I went. Probably I don't know six or seven years ago. That was a very good aquarium, but the best aquarium I've ever been to. And if you ever go to Singapore, like it blows your mind. The Singapore Aquarium is amazing. It was it was literally so good. It, I would go back to Singapore, literally just go to the aquarium again. Really, Singapore's they, that place with the big boat on stilts, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's a, it's quite small. The aquarium's not um, far from anything, I don't think. Um, but I remember they had when I went there, they had like everything from clarion angels and black tangs and gem tangs and well, everything sure. you could possibly imagine while also having like like those like massive sh- Did they have whale sharks there yeah i don't remember there being whale sharks there. well oh hang on sea aquarium singapore maybe yeah i think so yeah it looks hmm. a bit size them groupers as well by the way yeah like imagine that in with a bunch of chromis you, that you cannot believe how big that glass panel is you know how hmm. you can see those people there that's yeah. nothing like what it is yeah it's like it's it's, it's it's like going to the cinema and the entire wall of a of like a IMAX screen, like is is the tank. It is unbelievable when you go there. Yeah, see, Jay's Jay's been there. Singapore, yeah, I'd like to go. It's a very small place that you could do it in a weekend, basically. I think. Yeah. Um, the uh, so the, in Wikipedia, by the way, I've looked this up. <laughs> yeah. The first public aquarium was opened in London Zoo in May 1853. Okay, yeah. According to Wikipedia. And Brighton opened in 1872, so 19 years later. But I think Brighton claimed to be the longest continuously running, you said, because London Zoo closed closed it for a period or something. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Probably doing a war. They're trying to like sneak in. (laughs) Yeah. Um, There was something, someone asked if um, in the chat if you can still get tickets for Love to Reef. I don't know. Um, but ping uh, Paul, uh, Fish Palace on Instagram a message on uh, and ask him if he's still got tickets. I suspect so. And then let um, then let me know because I'm I'm thinking about going as well <laughs> at the moment. Cool. Send so. you've got to send him a message on it. So there's a website lovetoreef.com. Yeah. I've not been on it for a while, so I don't know um, what the latest is. You can't buy tickets on there, yeah. but that will give you info. But p- ping him a message or comment on one of his photos or something. It's um, in May, isn't it? 
I can't remember. It's yeah. So I'm going to see Ocean Color Scene. So whenever <laughs> Ocean Color Scene, <laughs> you tox it. Ah, oh, Ryan, for heaven's sake, is that band. a band? Yeah. Uh, so it's the same. Whatever date this is, uh, 18th of May. It's that yeah. date. I want to go and meet Jay. That's the reason I want to go because yeah. I want to go and I want to ask him for a picture and his autograph because he's famous. Yeah, yeah. So and I, I've heard he's going to be there. So that's the main reason I want to go. There you go. <laughs> Okay. um yeah let's ask uh, if i'm open on sunday i'm open like in the evenings i'm open seven. on sun i'm basically open all the time as long as i have a message if, as long as you message me so just uh, if send I, me if a message. I message you and said and not me but anybody said you know midnight on a saturday i kid you not some people will message me at 8 30 and they'll go can i come in half an hour i'm like yeah well i'm gonna have to turn right. the lights back on but if you want to come then come <laughs> okay what time do your lights go off? um you on the farm usually nine o'clock i think what time um, do they come on nine yeah, probably something like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter to me because I've got a choice. Either I say yes and the person comes in, I, I, as long as it's clean. Like if it's if it's the, if the tanks are a bit dirty, I'll go. Look, <laughs> I haven't cleaned it, but if you want to come, you can come. That's fine. Um, but uh, I've got a choice here. I'm sitting t watching TV or I'm earning money. I'd rather be earning money. <laughs> this is true. And I'm talking about fish as well. So why wouldn't? I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who doesn't like that? Yeah. Um, and there are still tickets for uh, for Love to Reef. So. Uh, ping um what's his name fish palace on instagram and message. Yeah, he's just offered fish me palace. his autograph as well there you go or does he get a selfie as well uh oh he didn't offer it to me well you're gonna have to you're gonna have to like work out what your autograph is by the time i get there so yeah. but as i said it's just uh it's a i it's i need to i need to check my very very busy calendar <laughs> <laughs> okay. so but I, I would like to go if i'm honest because you see because it's like these these events are quite special when you get loads and loads of like-minded fish weirdos together. It's <laughs> nice. It's nice because you every person in that room will come from all different backgrounds and everything, but they all are connected by one thing that they have this real passion for the hobby. So that's what it's like yeah. at Macna and the other places. So this is the website, how to buy tickets, love to reef at gmail.com, Instagram love to underscore reef ultimate reef there's a thread and then you can buy them at aac and this they've also got a load of vendors lined up for a small show because i think there's likely to be i can't remember it was less than 500 people a couple hundred i think i can't remember what it was but for a small show they've got some they've got a good lineup aac will be there because it's at the place nios ecotech red sea tmc uh ek marines uh coral uh, collective corals which is a coral vendor bc uk which i think is max spect uh coral essentials shes art there's like Fauna Marin, CJ. Gabe Real Reef is handing out um, signed <laughs> fo photographs of himself. Signed, yeah, signed T-shirts with his face on the T-shirts. Yeah. ITC, Aquaprint, they're good, 3D printing company. Salifer, oh, they'll all be under the same. But there's loads there. For a small show, that's pretty good going. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be interested to know how many people go, but I think last time it was it was over 100 people. That's that's plenty but of people. I can't remember. I watched the live stream. They talked about it a month or so ago. And I think he was going to go for double the people I had last time. And my my in my head, I've got the like 250 tickets. So yeah. I think it was that kind of level, but I can't. It might be double that. It might be half that. <laughs> well, I know three or four people that said to me, "If you're going, right, I'll go." And I was like, mm, "I'll think about it." <laughs> yeah. So it's. I think it's about two and a half hours for me. I think, but as I say, it's, really, I do. I think it's that far, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe uh, I suppose hours. it's it's up and around the M25, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's it's not that far from me, but it's a pain. Getting there is just I, I would go if I was around, but the the journey's horrible. It's on the M25, a hey, M25. Yeah, um, I just think you don't get these these things very often where you have the chance to meet loads of people that are, are the same as you. So no, yeah. hour and a half for you. Oh, is it? Is that all it is? <laughs> That if you were to go now. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say no I don't think it's an hour and a half. I, if I if I were to go now, I think I'd be there a bit early. Yeah, exactly. I'll take a tent. Um, but anyway, uh anything from your week in reefing? I've got a couple of other bits. Nope, that's I think that's it for me. And I'll be able to give you the update on uh my review of London Aquarium next week. Yeah. Not London <laughs> okay. Aquarium, London Zoo Aquarium. Yeah, okay, good. You, so is there London Zoo? Have they got like lions and stuff? Uh, they got tigers there. I have, to be fair, I haven't even looked at what it is. Um, I just thought, where no is one it? Of my friends, so Don't London. London. where is it? It's in London, it's in yeah, like Hyde yeah, Park, isn't it? But London's massive, well, in Hyde Park, right? Is it Hyde Park? It's in one of, or is it Regent Park? It's in one of the big parks, it's one of the parks, okay? Yeah, fine. 
Um, um, it's a place where you can hear like tigers growling, you know, while you're while you're playing frisbee in the park. Yeah, so, okay. one of those places. Because it bites your arm, yeah. Oh, yeah bloody I think tiger. It's part, I think. <laughs> okay. But, oh, yeah. Okay. If it's not, um, I'm not going to get there, am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're useless with London as well, so. True. No, no, I'm being. Um, she's picking me up from uh, Victoria. Oh, of course. Because yeah. yeah, there you are. Yeah, I'm, I get I get babysat if I go to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get yeah. night. She's going to pick me up from there. <laughs> Very good. Um, I bought one of your favourite rasses uh, yesterday, Ryan. Uh, well, Melanaris. No, God, no. Oh, What's your mouth? Oh, pos- possum ras. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. There's a couple that look the same. Which type? I don't know. Which one. It's a wet morella or I don't know. It's, it's that kind of ras. Is, there's, there's... is it a gold band with two, like, gold bands on it? Can I see him? Hang on. I can't see him. I don't. I didn't have a really close uh, look at his colorings. Um, so I don't. There, but there are two or three that look the same. I couldn't tell which one it is. <laughs> are you telling me that you bought a fish that you don't know the name of? Yeah. And you don't know it, like, what the colour of it is. <laughs> I know what colour it is. I can see it, but <laughs> okay, I went in and I said, "I said, have you got any wet, uh, uh, wet morella brass or yeah. possum brass, whatever?" I can't remember why I said, and because uh, uh, I couldn't see any, and they yeah. were hiding because they hide. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted the smallest one, basically. Uh, so. I really like those. There's, I've only ever had the gold band ones, and I've always wanted the other ones, but I've just never like got one for some reason. Um, I should try and find the other. The other one's got like w- like white. The white bands go all over it. The guy, so the guy in the shop is Bruce at Reefkeeper. Um, hi Bruce. He, he said uh, that one the the one that it's not has got a band through its eye. It's not that one. <laughs> so oh, it's the so other you, one. Mm, well, but they both they both sort of got bands through their eyes. One of them's got white bands. One of them's got gold bands. Basically. Uh, anyway, I bought <laughs> I bought one of those. I need to know this. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I bought one of those, um, and I think apparently it's not a Tanakas because the Tanakas are a bit can more uncommon. Can what? you just read James's comment? James, he doesn't want to say what color it is because he sees grey fish. <laughs> Get out, Les, ban him. <laughs> I'm not bloody color blind. Um, yeah, it's grey. It's grey. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the one that's just come in as well. Oh, oh god, I have no idea where this came from. You that's what you know full well where it came from, and people believed it because you said it anyway. Uh, yeah, it's grey, and um, but yeah, whatever. So I bought it because I got um, I saw the other day it's, it's in the Cade, yeah, uh, and the Cade. I don't buy many corals for that, but I noticed the other day on the glass there, and I can't remember the last time I bought corals, probably a good few months ago. But there are a couple of tiny little flatworms on the glass. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. I bet they're on my my torch corals, Yeah, possibly. if I had to guess, because a couple of them aren't looking 100%. Yeah. But um, Beef Talk is fish racist. I know. I read that at first, and I was like, what does that even mean? Then I, thought, and then I saw it was from Les. I'm like, oh, Les is cool. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so but yeah, so I've got a couple of tiny little... Um, Fat worms, which is annoying. So I bought one of those. I don't actually think it's going to be a problem. There, there's no acros in there, so it's not like they're acro eating flatworms or whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just thought, well, you know, it's an excuse to get. I've only got two crownfish in there, so excuse to get a third fish is good. There's, there's actually, there's, there's a few different types of um, flatworms which actually don't really bother corals. I remember Jake Adams was saying this, like he, he. Um, he he took out um, the, some of the euphilia, and when he likes, we was dipping them. It was unbelievable how much stuff was coming off of them. But the corals seemed to be mostly fine from it. Yeah. And there are there are some which obviously do damage corals, but there are definitely some which just sit on the corals, and it's not as bad. I bought a, a frag of parites from uh, a shop once. Oh, and yeah, it was, yeah. I yeah. didn't notice. It was an inch across or whatever, nicely based out. Didn't notice until I got it back home or the next day. It was covered in grey flatworms, completely yeah. covered. But then I, I, I went back into the shop and I noticed that all they had like 10 frags of the same one and they yeah. were all covered in the flatworms. Yeah. <laughs> but I looked at all the other corals and they weren't on any other coral. It was just that parietes. What colour were the flatworms? <sighs> they were grey, right? Are you sure? <laughs> Yes, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> um, but they, they weren't on any other uh, any other corals. And so I left that coral just on its own because the, the coral was fine. It was healthy. Yeah, yeah. I left it for a couple of weeks and I bought a, um, a, a mandarin or what, a dragonet of some kind, whatever it was, because I was like, well, maybe they'll eat it. Probably not, but it's an excuse to buy a mandarin. Yeah, yeah. And he, he didn't touch him. <laughs> but I was like... <laughs> but I was like, let's just leave it and see what happens. And nothing happened at all. And eventually I was like, Do you know what? 
take it out, dip it, and it killed all the flatworms, and I put it back in. It was it was fine. Yeah, but it was it it, it was covered in them. It was weird because when you first see it, you didn't notice them. So there's obviously lots of green there, but it was covered in them, and they did no harm whatsoever. And it, yeah. like if if it got to the point where they were literally completely covered, it wouldn't get any light, and that would be a problem. But yeah, yeah, I, it didn't seem to be bothering them. Yeah, so, I think there's some things where people don't get me wrong. There are some which are absolutely will just wipe yeah. things out, but not all of them. If you see what I mean. Acro flatworms and the big polyclad flatworms. Yeah. I got, I got, I bought a frag. It was, it was in my last house. How long ago it was? But this mass. It was like a flat slug. It was huge. Yeah, that's the polyclad that, one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that came off in a dip, and I was like, <laughs> it was I've see, I've had. I remember in my thousand liter tank finding one of those in in the in the weir box once, and I was like. I think these eat clams. I don't have any clams. I've never had any clams. <laughs> so what was it eating? And nothing seemed to be dying. So I wonder if they're one of those things that have a reputation for being really, really bad. But because some are do? like, yeah, some probably are really bad and others are not that bad. Maybe. Yeah. I, don't know, See, but... I didn't find it bad, but I someone might go, this is the worst flatworm you can get. But in my experience, I didn't have a pretty issue with the polyclad ones and they don't multiply like the other ones do. <laughs> Right, they're so normally like one massive one. There were loads that they were tiny, re, like almost they look like um, uh, not copepods. Um, uh, yeah, copepods. Sorry, no, I'm they talking were, about the, the polyclad one, the big one. That, you yeah, yeah, the, these ones were, were minute, you almost didn't see them. But um, I don't, and I'm not, I'm not going to use flatworm exit or whatever because that's a potential risk of because they're to, they release toxins, don't they? Some of them I don't think yeah. they will do, but I just don't want to risk it. And it seems okay, but um, anyway. That was, I just thought I'd let you know on that. <laughs> what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah. And on the water box, yeah, because I removed my one spot fox face um, as punishment for eating my um, my scully. Yeah. I've got algae growing. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the rocks are absolutely fine. Yeah. But one of the the power cables for the for my Nero 5 has got just like brown, uh, long, green hair algae, but it's brown yeah. um, flowing off it. And I've got a couple of bits of ulva. Uh, that have picked up or behind some of the powerheads as well. That obviously the the fox face was eating, and now he's gone. It's like, hey, I can grow again. Well, you so. should do. You should get another fox face. Uh, I will. Well, this that tank. I that, was joking. Um, but... That, <laughs> that rockscape is going in the in the Red Sea. Yeah. In probably two months time. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So. Well, you'll have your other fox face back by then. Yeah, my rabbit. Yeah. I love so, it. although we're going to petition they, well, before they go, I'm going to do a petition with them to see if they want to come home, and if they don't want to come home. Then um, I'm sorry, but we're just I'm just going to change the locks so you can't get in. You can buy them off me, but because they're um, celebrity fish, they're very expensive. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. So, um, what else was I going to say? I think that's everything. Anything else from you in your week in reefing? Nope. I'd say my it's just been relatively normal week in reefing for me. Just nothing particularly exciting. Just just customers. Nothing going on with the war box. The rocks are still in the same position they were from when I took them all down. I'm basically just, I'm just, I've, yeah. I've ordered a, this is very unexciting, um, but <laughs> I have ordered a paint scraper for the water box tank um, because I find, and I've always found this, oh, yeah. magnets scratch the glass of, yeah. of tanks. And there are a couple of small, like little, probably like half inch or inch ones scratches. You can barely see them. Whereas before with my thousand lead tank, I always had a paint scraper. I never ever ever use an a, a, a magnetic one because on the very first day of you of getting that tank, I used a magnetic one and it put a foot long scratch. In ah. it. So I've died. I'm going back to my roots and I'm I'm just going to do it by hand once a week. Oh, but then you've enough. got to take the lid off and you get your hand wet and it's like, don't care, don't care. Do you do because I like with an algae scraper, I do it twice a week. Most sometimes I slack off, but yeah. would you? How often will you do you do it? Because you did it before, like all the time. So, it's it's weird. It, even on the even in the coral farm, they de the algae grows on the glass at very different rates on, on all the tanks. So the the one thousand liter tank that I used to have, I only had to do that once a week, and that was fine. It had very very low nutrients. I now look back and I was like, wow, I was definitely <laughs> overdosing Rafos. And all my all my you know my corals had that like pastely look to them, and I didn't know at the time that that what was what I was doing. But I was basically stripped because if you look at the the picture on my website of the pink history, don't do it now. Um, but next time you're on it, have a look. It's like really, really, really pink. Well, I've got that same coral now in the coral farm, and it's nowhere near as pink as that because the nutrients aren't, aren't completely. Stripped oh, okay. Out. 
So you can get it that pink if you if you like starve it to within like an inch of its life. <laughs> That's funny. So it's the same coral. Yeah. So Coral's and also pain, yeah. on on the way on the coral farm, it's it's a much darker pink and it actually has blue polyps. Whereas on that, it looks like it's pink with pink polyps. So I need to update that picture. <laughs> there are a few different um, types of histories, though, aren't they? Yeah, I know, Half but that but, but they that are, literally has one. come from there to here. Right. Okay. I haven't got different different ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, in which case we can move on to. Oh, actually, no. Sorry, algae scrapers. So I, I obviously I broke my um, Peninsula 500 down recently. Yeah. And when I did that, I use a Tunzi uh, Care Magnet Long. I think on that one. Yeah, that's why I've got on the water box. Yeah. So I had I'd, I'd been using that for at least five five or six years. The whole time the tank was set up, I think, for memory. Yeah. And I did. I had one scratch that was about an inch long deep enough to be like you'd notice it you actually you never noticed it until suddenly if so if i told you where it was then you yeah, see it. yeah but when i broke it down completely i drained it and i cleaned it i sort of semi-cleaned it anyway um uh I, it wasn't like covered sometimes you'll drain the tank and it's covered in scratches on the inside that yeah. for whatever reason you don't see refraction or whatever you don't see when it's full of water this wasn't it didn't really have i didn't look really closely but i took photos because i was selling it and it didn't really have any any scratches. That one, but apart from that, didn't. My water box um, has got two big, probably two, three inch long scratches next to each other. And I bet that's where, that's the same algae mag, and I bet yeah. that's where a bit of sand or something got stuck or gravel. You've got no sand in that tank, have you? No, but there's there's detritus at the bottom, like yeah. bits of rock break off or whatever. So, but I, the thing is, I don't, with when I did that scratch, I saw it one day, I was like, Where'd that come from because it's not like yeah. i was scraping it one day and and you hear a or you feel it yeah so i got no idea it must have been the algae scraper there's no other explanation but i yeah. couldn't tell it wasn't like i didn't know it had happened well because it, it happened so bad for for obviously that thousand leaf tank and it because it was so raw because it was like literally the first yeah. day pretty much and it i kid you not i'm not exaggerating it was a foot long it was like i'd done i'd done this and it just went and after that, I was like, so now I look at this tank and I go, no, I'll just clean it by hand because <laughs> I don't. Eventually that could happen again. And I don't want it to happen again because once mm. it's done, it's done. It's too late. So that's why I'd rather clean it by hand. But we shall yeah. see. Fair enough. Um, the, all right. With, with that Tunzi Care Magnet, just to just so you know, it has two sides to it, doesn't it? A long side and a short side. Mm -hmm. Take the short side off buy another long side for like, oh, they're, they're, like they're like eight quid so when yeah. you because normally you go you have to like do like do it a few it. times yeah, to get yeah, rid yeah. of it yeah whereas if you if you have them both blades on both sides it does it so much easier do you think that might be why you scratched it <laughs> no because I, I literally just got i've only just done that yeah uh, no i like that i've not, I've not um i've not thought of that i uh but the, the tons of algae magnet for me is that's the best i have the yeah. i have the flipper on on the cade bought yeah. both of them by the way um and they the tunzi is the tunzi is just so good <laughs> the flipper yeah. is decent but for that if you when you come back from like a two-week break or whatever and there's hard algae on there the flipper takes ages to get off whereas the tons it's like phew, straight away yeah <laughs> slight exaggeration but anyway Tank i love scrape, it however yeah, 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 yeah. One go. <laughs> yeah, but then your wet arm, your, your t shirt wet, and you know, I, don't I know. used to enjoy doing that actually. I don't really? know why you see because you can get every little bit, every yeah, all in the sand, and everything, and you don't have to worry. And it and you make it look pristine, and then it gradually over the course of a week, you get shitter and shitter, and then you make it look pristine again. Yeah, it looks so good when you clean a tank, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, the one last thing actually on the red sea tank, I've not uh, seen this on my tank, but I'm aware they've got it. They've got armored seams. So on the inside of the silicon, there's a bit of plastic or something that guards it. So you don't have to worry about the algae scraper flashing away the uh, the silicon. I, I don't actually know if that's an issue because I, I was pretty careful. I'm pretty careful with my tanks, but there are times when I'm like bash, 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 because yeah. you just want to get the, because the algae builds up on that bit. And I had that tank for six years, and it didn't ever cause a problem. And the silicon yeah. looked in pretty good condition. Yeah. But I do, I do wonder. Saying this now after you've just sold it to someone. <laughs> no, well, I mean it's long gone. I mean, but, um, but no, I so I, I don't, I don't think that's a problem. But I, I was always paranoid about it. So now there's a, a bit of armoring there. I can just go bash, 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 and it doesn't matter. <laughs> do you know what absolutely does affect the seams, urchins? One hundred percent. They go around <laughs> eating. So I don't know if it's because there's like a really thin, like you know how. There's like a thick bit, and then it goes thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner right to the edges. Yeah. Well, the very edges of the thinnest bit that's almost translucent, you can see the urchins have gone through and eaten it. So, mm. yeah. 
definitely they must, they must be eating um algae off the the silicon so I, i've had urchins in my i've got them in all my tanks i love them yeah i've never noticed that uh, ever. hundred they're like literally 100 percent. they definitely do because i put like seven in there didn't i once oh, so i like okay. i noticed it like properly <laughs> The only time I noticed, excuse me, sorry, I've tied to <laughs> The only time I noticed, I put a crab, a hermit crab in my sump because a, a few people had said, hey, did you know crabs eat detritus? I was like, like the, the dust that settles in your sump. Yeah, I was yeah. like, no way, that can't yeah. be true. But I was like, well, I'm going to try it. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> of course I, it's not true because it's just like rubble. But anyway. Yeah. It's um, not yeah. unusual for me to put a, a hermit crab in the sump. Just because if any like food settled oh, yeah, in there, yeah, 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 thing yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. But um, anyway, he so there was this one. I, I noticed one day there was this one, like a divot, like a little dent in the in the silicon. Yeah. And the hermit crab was sat on it, like pulling food out of it. And I was like, was that there before? Or did, or did you <laughs> so I was like, well, yeah. you're getting back in the tank, mate. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I'd be surprised think, if a hermit crab was strong exactly, enough. Exactly. I know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. still, when I, I was like, oh god, what if? <laughs> Yeah. Um, we can move on to uh, the what's it called? News. Uh, yes. No. No. Member no. No. Questions? Member questions. Fish of the week. Oh, <laughs> not yet. Member questions. Um, the first of which is from the Crusade, which uh, who says, "What upscaled equipment are you looking to get now? You've joined the six foot club, so presumably has a six foot tank, and you have a six foot tank as well, Ryan." Great. Six foot's good. Um, uh, so I bought a skimmer. I bought a Bubble King skimmer because I've. It's weird. It's one of those things I've always wanted a Bubble King skimmer. Yeah, don't really know why. Cause it's just a skimmer at the end of the day. Oh, so you're not using the Red Sea skimmer? I, I assume that's what you were using. Oh, no, no. Cool. So they, they said I could take basically anything I want. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, well, I'll have the lights. Um, yeah. And I, my first, my first reaction was mm, kind of like the Kessels. And then I was like, well, they do the same shimmer. But anyway, yeah. um, so I had the lights. I was up for that. But I've got a return pump that I like anyway. The refactor one, I think, is based on a Jekod. I like Jekod. Um, and I've got, uh, I bought a skimmer because I want a Bubble King skimmer. Don't really know why. It's expensive. Yeah. It's it's just a skimmer at the end of the day, but <laughs> I just want one. Um, so I've got that. And what else? What I, I've kept I've kept my NIOS torque reactor, phosphate reactor, because it's brilliant. I keep meaning to do yeah, a long term yeah. review on that. It's so good, yeah. so much better than because all the other ones I've had before, they're difficult to take apart, or they've got the, the, the Rafos crunches when you're screwing it back in. Yeah, it's yes. just brilliant. I love it. So yeah. I've got that. Um I don't think there's oh and then the power head. So I've got MP40s, four MP40s. They yeah. won't need to be running at 100 percent like they were on my other tank. But yeah. I'm going to replace all of the wet sides with new wet sides. Okay. Because they're like five, six years old, so they might as well. Um yeah. and then uh, I think that's about it. I, I've got to buy new heaters. So I had my old Shago heaters, they were six years old. I didn't ever replace them. I don't think that's necessary. But I've yeah. thrown them away. Six years, you might as well. But the Shago, you can't buy Shago heaters, titanium heaters in it over in the UK anymore. You used to. But now they're DD, and I don't know if DD yeah, yeah. just rebadged Shago. But I've seen a couple of people on Ultimate Reef say posts and say they bought a, a DD heater, titanium heater, and it failed. Yeah, and that makes me go, oh, is that just a couple of people, or is that a systematic systematic issue? And the, the uh, so I was looking at heaters today. Do you know what one stood out at the top? The one with the um <laughs> with the Wi-Fi, uh, the what? contactless. The contactless one yeah, that yeah. Like, I spent two hours like on because it's CJ. It's got a five year warranty. You're, you're not seriously buying it, are you? I might do because <laughs> all <laughs> I, I want from a heater. It I doesn't don't... matter to me. It's only that... funny because I know. People... <laughs> I <know. laughs> yeah, but I don't care. Like the contactless, I just don't care about. It. I would rather it didn't have it, and it would rather yeah. be simple. But it's got a five year warranty, which probably means it's reliable. And CJ. Uh, have got a reputation for Italian build quality, good build quality. Yeah. So, I, and I was looking at that or the Eheim ones. The Eheim ones really long; they're like half a meter long or something crazy. So, cool. yeah. So, but I've not made my mind up yet. But that's I, I'll need to get new heaters. Apart, and then I'll buy the AI blades, of course, the six foot yeah. ones. Uh, anyway, um, but I don't think any other new equipment. Not going to be much equipment in the tank, to be fair. I've just re I've just remember you've just reminded me something. So even though obviously the tank was free and it was the same for me mm -hmm. it's still so expensive to set up a tank <laughs> when you <laughs> when you when you add in all the other things that you have to get done to do it like it, it doesn't feel like it's free because you probably spent two grand i reckon like make yeah. like well, well 500 pounds that is moving into the house <laughs> yeah 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 the skimmer was a grand <laughs> yeah so there's one and a half grand already if you see what I but mean. then i i think i probably if i'd have bought the tank i wouldn't be spending a grand on a skimmer yeah yeah true. so because i've got the free cash you know yeah um but yeah so that's that's the upscale equipment I'm, I'm getting um i don't think anything else not nothing else that i can think of excuse me uh, oh and, and gary mcconnell says which which ai blades i'm going for the 
gl uh, the grow, the ones with the white spectrum, the same as these are these are grows. I don't like the glows. They've got a really purpley kind of violet e spectrum. I like the, these, and they've got the same number of four fifty nanometer diodes in in the grow or the glow, which are the ones I really want for the the fluorescence. So it doesn't really matter. And yeah. I prefer I prefer those ones. Uh, Edward says with hydros. Oh, this is in the news. So it's uh, spoilers coming. <laughs> Uh, with Hydrus coming out with the Maven, their auto testing unit got me thinking. Money aside, is there a minimum tank size before you go all in on every piece of tech? <laughs> I'm managing my 75 gallon fairly well with Hannah checkers, and I'm uh, and I'm out of room in the cabinet. But with new but new tech is hard to resist. Tell me about it. <laughs> um, tank size, I don't think really comes into it because actually I've got a, I'm currently on my water box, which is only. 120 liters after displacement, I bet. 150 max. No way it's more than that. Um, I've got a, a KH keeper <laughs> and I've got a smart tester testing phosphate. <laughs> um, so size, I don't think really matters. It's yeah. more for me, it's about can you afford the automatic testing equipment? If you can't, don't buy it, full stop. Uh, but also how much money have you invested in the tank and how lazy are you? <laughs> That's the one for me. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. That's my one. <laughs> um but so i don't you don't need you don't need any of that tech at all for any tank you could have a, a spectacular andrew sandler could have his tank with no automation whatsoever apart from you know auto top of web you know uh, so you don't need equipment on or any of that tech but if you can afford it and i think if you if you're lazy enough and if you've spent enough money it's worth having but yeah yeah i i i, I have nothing to add to that because i i agree you're Except as I said, I'm lazy. So yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> but you got to calibrate it, as I found out with my alkalinity. Oh, my alkalinity is down to ten, by the way. Now, <laughs> oh nice. nice, still high, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, and Richie's Reef is the final question. He says, "Do alkalinity swings kill coral, or do struggling corals stop uptaking alk, resulting in a swing when dosing it? Cause or effect, or perhaps a bit of both?" <laughs> so. There's alk swings killing corals is uh, is a discussion. Some people will say yeah it does. Other people will say no it doesn't. Yeah. And you know there's probably shades of gray in between. My take on it is I've ha I had a an alkalinity swing wipe out a um a, an established acro colony, and um, when I sold a load of corals, uh, and I think that was the only thing that I tested that swung significantly. That doesn't mean it was anything that did something. It might, my pH might swung and I didn't notice. So it might not have been that. I think that alkalinity swings do kill corals and that um, it might not be that it's that that kills corals. It might be that it, that they were they were unhealthy for something else. There was something else going on and that finished them off. But I think uh, at the very least, alkalinity swings, corals don't like out. Yeah, I was just saying they don't like swings. <laughs> exactly. And he said, and, and, do, and do struggling corals stop up taking alk, resulting in a swing? kind of but corals don't just like suddenly decide they're sulking and stop up taking out it's, it's a slow process yeah so that doesn't cause a swing as such yeah and so if one coral struggling it's not, it would have to be oh, all yeah. of the coral struggling and or if all the corals one. are struggling you've got something <laughs> fundamentally wrong with, with something in your tank yeah but so yeah i hope that helps uh, and I'll just refresh to make sure there are no new comments there are not uh, so that is member questions which means we're on to the prestige reef Issue that we, oh bollards! I meant to get you to email me that picture because <laughs> I can't. The oh. picture of the coral. Oh, the coral. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can do it in real time. <laughs> right. So the fish of the week. Yep. Is <laughs> yeah. very slow. So the fish of the week I'm going for is a Springer's damsel. Um, oh yeah. The reason I've gone for a Springer's damsel is is because um. There, I like fish that do stuff, and Springer's damsels eat flatworms. So, if you had a problem with flat, you could have got a Springer's damsel instead of. Um... Oh, that's true. By reputation, these are the least aggressive damsels. Yes, but you also have to keep them on their own, I believe. So people don't. What do you mean? Like... As in, just only one, or? Yeah. So I have one in every tank. Um, just, okay. just like the same as I have a cop band in every tank, and I have a zebrazoma in every tank. Um, but I don't, so I don't I... know how aggressive they are with each other. I had three of these in my water box. Yeah. But the mistake I made, the first day I bought one and I was like, I just want one. That's the same as you. That was my thinking. Yeah. And that, but when I bought it, the guy in the shop was like, oh, no one's ever bought one. They always buy a group. Oh, maybe and, not. Uh, and so and I, like, I went away and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, 
and obviously like people talk about keeping these in groups. I've seen loads of people in groups, but the fact that he said no one's ever bought one, I was like, oh right, that's weird. Maybe I should buy more. So I bought another two a couple of weeks later. Yeah. But the two that I bought separately were best mates. Yeah. The one I bought before, they didn't like him. So they were like, they were like, no, we don't like you. And they were probably in the same tank before in the shop. Yeah. But they 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 were they were over separate side of the tank. So two would hang around together, the other was the other corner. And one I of them jumped. Picture. Just, oh, cheers! Just, you want to start one, one, one of them jumped out of the tank in the end because he was being yeah. bullied. Yeah. So, so I think you can keep groups together. They took that. I found that they tended to peck at each other and they'd like they'd chase each other. But yeah. like tiger barbs, if you ever kept tiger barbs in a freshwater, no. no. But they, so they they chased each other, but they didn't really seem to do any harm. It was, it was only because I introduced two separately that they they really didn't like them. But I, my impression is they'll bicker most of the day. Yeah. amongst themselves but they're all right they're not like chromis where they'll kill each other yeah because but... some some of them really will like properly go for each other <laughs> yeah. i almost bought a group of humbug damsels once just because oh, they look like, so cool <laughs> they do look cool and they've even got that sort of like that weird shape to them where they don't look like a normal it's not, it's not like a normal chromis fish shape like an well. arrowhead yeah yeah it's um and i remember being at the at the fish shop and i and the owner just went do not buy these. <laughs> I was like, I'd like yeah. to have four of those, please, or five of those. He's like, do not buy them. I'm like, why do you have them? Yeah, it's a good, good question. He obviously sells them to some people, but because he's like, I I developed a friendship with him by that point, and he was yeah. like, no, 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 do not get these. <laughs> not to you. Yeah. No, I wanted. Same? I can't remember if it was them or Domino Damsel because they looked similar, black yeah, and white, but, basically. Yeah. But there was one of those when I started the hobby. I was desperate for them because they just looked so cool. But, it's funny because yeah. I'm exactly the same as that, where when people come to the coral farm, I and if they want to buy Xenia, I say, how big is your tank? If they go, it's like three foot, I'm like, mm, 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 mm. you don't get Xenia. <laughs> you can buy it from somewhere else, but you cannot buy it from me. Um, I've got Xenia in my reef casa, 10 gallon. No, I know. That's fine. Okay. As in, like, <laughs> if that if it takes over in your that tank, it's not going to be a problem. But if it yeah, takes, that's true. if it if you've got a three foot tank or a four or five foot tank and you put it in there, the chance that it's going to be like it will become a problem at some point. Um, and usually people come back and they go, "Oh yeah, thanks for telling me not to get it." <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, because as I said before, I want people to come back every single weekend or yeah. as often as they want. And if they if they're not happy with their tank, they don't come back. The Xenia in my reef casa isn't really. I wouldn't say it's struggling, but it's not growing. And most of the other corals are growing. Sl it's still early days. The tank's only less than six months old, and you don't tend to get growth that much early on. But all of the other corals, things? I've got no idea. That's the trouble. <laughs> I've t I tested it. Like I think I tested it when I, when I made one of the videos because I wanted to make sure everything was all right. Yeah. That was the last time I tested it because this is to, to me. There's got to be a low maintenance, and I wanted it. I was trying to do a water change this weekend, but I ran out of time. Yeah. But I, I don't know. And that's the thing. It's like it could be low. It could be high. Who knows? <laughs> You're it one of those good. people. So when I'm you say you test every week, you test some of your tanks oh, every week. The, yeah, the good tanks. But that's, the, good the tank. whole point of that tank is I don't. If I was, if I had to test it every week and do a water change every week, it's not happening. I haven't got. I have not got the time. Yeah. Um, uh, have you got all the time? You haven't got the desire. Be honest, because if you had to find time, you would do it. It's the desire with having three yeah. tanks. You lose the desire of one of them. But it's it's it, okay. I, I'll concede it's partly the desire. <laughs> But it's also the time because I've got a full time job. I've got a wife. I've got this YouTube channel. I've Are got you just two bragging other... now? No, 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 no. <laughs> I've got two other YouTube channels uh, yeah. and I've got two other tanks as well. So it is, and uh, to be fair, it's not like I have no time where I, I could go and do it. I could, of course, I could. Yeah. But when you've got all that stuff going on, the amount of time that you've got that you want to devote to that sort of stuff is diminished. I wonder what will happen. Is when the new tank goes in because yeah, yeah one of those four <laughs> tanks if not two of those four tanks it, oh because well, you're getting rid of the water box isn't aren't you the water box is going because that's, exactly that's gonna that's yeah. gonna be transferred to the red sea so yeah. that's definitely going the cade is almost certainly staying yeah. the reef casa probably gonna go i suspect yeah i can't i can't like given that it's so easy maintenance i'm tempted to keep it i do like it but i want to i want it to grow out but is it currently covered in algae, the, the glass? No. No? no, no, no. No, I'd say the algae doesn't really grow. And I scrape it off occasionally. I've got a little a nano uh, uh, flipper. But it looks, it looks good. It's not yeah. like there's no um, 
nothing. No, there's no pests in there. It looks nice. No That's the perfect tank. The one you'd have to look after. <laughs> but the, but wine forward six months, given I'm not doing water changes. <laughs> yeah. It'll probably look, well, occasionally. I meant to do a big one this weekend, like 50 But if wine forward six months, it'll look a state, I bet. Or well, maybe it won't, but there's Has a risk. Has it got a leak, that tank? Yeah. I was going to say, because the the one thing I've noticed massively, like unbelievably, with the quarantine tank that's got a lid, I never have to put any RO water in it. I think I've topped it up. Oh, Probably a proper like, lid, I see. Yeah, yeah, this is like a proper, like... It's Mine, got, the briefcase got a mesh cover, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. no, this is a proper lid, yeah. I Like, I think I've put RO water in it maybe three times in almost 30, days. <laughs> whereas normally on the other tanks, it's like every... Goes Couple in of hours, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, I don't know. And I've got on that one, I've got the Tunzi 88, the, the first gen Tunzi 88, so it's yeah. really noisy. And it's in the it's in the room behind my living room. And every now and then, I can just hear this, yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, what do you think? Yeah, but it's, that's kind of, I don't, I don't really care about the noise. Before. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the fish of the week. Uh, and the car of the week is an underappreciated Montipora. So I decided to go for the Mean Streak Montipora. Uh, nice. There there are, I think, four different types of grafted Montipora, possibly five. Two okay. of them are, uh, are different shades of green. And then you've got one that's green and red with um, yellow dots on. This one I is actually one of my favorite ones. But compared to the other ones, I probably sell five times as many of the normal grafted Montipora to every one piece of this and i don't yeah. know why because i think because it's rarer it's there i think they're similar prices and you don't see it very often <laughs> is that purple yeah don't say it's gray <laughs> no it's definitely purple yeah yeah because i said i had i had one of these i can't remember if i got it from you you i think Probably you did i think did. i think i sent it to you one of the mystery yes it was boxes. a mystery pack yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it's really nice and i i, got, I didn't want it because it's a Monty and Monty yeah, in, that, yeah. in that tank in particular. Yeah. Monty's double in size every five minutes. Ridiculous. Yeah. And even on that, I had I just had it on the frag rack and it encrusted onto the bloody frag rack. I, it grows fast. I didn't have it like, yeah, it grows so quick. So I didn't want it, but I was tempted to put it on the scape actually. Yeah. It's so nice. The but, the reason I picked that as well is because, do you remember, you might not have been around at this point, when people were putting two pieces of Montipora together, yeah, yeah. trying to graft them. And then we now know that grafted Montipora is not two pieces of Montipora put together. It's actually a fluorescent protein virus. <laughs> so all yeah, the people okay. claiming, like years ago, saying that they had done it, were lying <laughs> because it doesn't. It does. Look, there's a possibility that maybe it happened to one person, yeah. but every single time I ever tried it, or other people that I knew tried it, that one grew over the other. And that's that's the, what I was going to say. <laughs> yes, but because that is people were pretending that they that they were grafting it themselves but it that isn't how it works it literally is a virus which causes the green or the purple it might be that the virus spread to the coral next to it mm. more of a coincidence than anything mm. else but... it, the, the virus does spread around the tank is interesting you, you it definitely that goes from one coral to the other um only I certain corals on my Tropic Thunder, I had that. It looked, you know, like some corals are just, just described as bleeding because it looks like there's um, green dripping across them. Yeah. I think that's the, the, the fluorescent protein infection or whatever. I had that on my um, Tropic Thunder on some patches. It looked like it was, but it looked really cool. But Yeah. Can everyone um, stop saying Alex is colorblind? Because it makes him very, very mad. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my and I don't know where this rumor came from. Um, you do know where it I, came from. I have from, no boss. idea where this rumor came from. <laughs> I do not condone it. Um, but... uh, anyway so that's the fishing car of the week yeah uh, and that means we are oh anything else to tell us about uh mean street monty not really if i'm honest just it's just quite cheap like... isn't it yeah well uh, they, 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 like, like i think it's between 20 and 30 pounds so it's not like a expensive expensive yeah. piece that, um, the, the, the the grafted monties used to be like 200 quid when they i know them. my first piece of Probably grafted montipora came from um the young uh, i can't it was somewhere in like Holland. Oh, where was it? I can't remember. I, I did a video on it, but yeah, it cost two hundred pounds for a piece of it. Two hundred pounds. But I knew that if I got it, I could frag it, I could grow it, I could sell yeah. it. And I remember the first pieces of that. I was selling like when I grew it, I was selling them for one hundred and fifty pounds a piece. So obviously, it paid for a, it was worth yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now they come down. They're like twenty pounds a piece. So there you go. Nice coral, to be fair. Unless, um, unless unless someone came this weekend and they got a piece that was about the size of their hand for like yeah, 20 yeah. quid, I think. 
<laughs> and that brings us on to the news. Yeah. And did you just yawn while that was playing? Oh, massive! I'm so tired. You did, didn't you? I was on I was on my motorbike the most of yesterday, and it's quite tiring when you're when you're on the, on the bike. But yeah, I don't know why I'm so tired today. But uh, I yawn at the best times anyway. Um, yeah, so thin slim pickings in the news. So at the moment, I don't know if Jeremy Gay's on holiday or something. But Reef Builders is there's loads of guest writers articles, but there's yeah. not much news going up there, and so uh, I struggle because <laughs> that's the where I get. Over fifty percent of my news is from comes from reef builders. But anyway, uh, this week we have two pieces of news, and the great news for Ryan is that they're both equipment. Oh God! <laughs> One and they're both auto testers. One sec, let, let me put on my um pretend to be interested face. <sighs> don't right. have a pretend to be interested. No, I don't. It's usually like this, isn't it? Uh, the first is from Hydros, which is called the Maven, or the Shaven Maven, as I call it. Okay. Um, and someone on the Prestige Reef Talk show, I think it was Philip Harrison, uh, uh, said, I'm craving the Maven, which I like. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a an auto test. It will test everything you want, basically. Uh, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, nitrate, and phosphate. Uh, it has uh, this this bit here is in the middle is the is the, the the testing vial yeah so it has one you can only test one uh one of each of them at a time one parameter at a time but it has two intakes so you could connect it to two tanks if they're close enough together okay which is quite cool um How does it, and test? it is it's like a hana checker a okay. posh hana checker it's got a, a color meter of uh, this is why I, I don't actually know that but I, I it looked like that was what it um it did it looks like it's got a color meter so it, it it does like the color change thing and it says your nitrates four or whatever because it knows what color it looks quite is. small to do all those things so it's uh, that's it's it's kind of like it's size of your head basically from okay. what i can make out <laughs> yeah. uh probably i mean What's a head is not a standard measurement, but you know, it's not even it's that's not, quite small. The, 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 yeah, it's it's not massive to yeah. be fair, but it's um, it's got there are a couple of th actually. I made it, I watched the video about it, uh, because I wanted to make a few notes on it. So it tests all those things. Um, it's a standalone device, so you don't need the other hydro stuff, um, to uh, to run it. It's got two inlets. That was it. There were a couple other points that I've forgotten from the video now, but there were there was one thing that uh, for me is a deal breaker. That means I wouldn't buy this, and I think they need to seriously. They, to, they you, we often upset people. We're gonna upset Hydros this week because like, well, 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 we don't often upset people. You often do. Upset. <laughs> no, this, this is this is not good enough on this. But the one thing that I really genuinely don't like, yeah, it's not available in the UK. Oh, is it not? No, and for that uh, reason, I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> I was wondering what you were gonna say because I, I was <laughs> like, <laughs> Telegram really rates these. Like, I think yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it looks really good to be fair, but we don't get it in the UK. And it's got, I, and it, they've never made any noises like they're gonna bring it over to Europe. But why? So, but why? <laughs> but um, why? <laughs> I don't know. But because they, they've, they're, they're a relatively new. Hydros is a relatively new company. Yeah. And they're, I think they're trying to establish themselves before they spread out. So, and America's a big market anyway. So. Yeah, true. It's probably. Hydros, a lot of if you're listening, and you want a, dis a distributor, you let me know. There you so, go. Yeah. Get yeah, in the distribution market. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that looks really good. And Hydro stuff generally looks good. It looks solid. Yeah. Um, and I don't, it feels like it's well built. <laughs> I've never touched one, but from the, like if Telegram talks about it and it just looks like it's well put together and I like it. It looks good. But, and there's no, there's no, um, no, there's no notes on um, release date. They said yeah. this year. <laughs> I'm assuming um, there's nothing to stop you from just buying one from America, getting it sent over and changing the plug socket. I did think about that, but I don't really understand. Sometimes 110 volts doesn't trans translate to 240 volts. I don't really understand don't it, know. to be honest. I, the, the thought did cross my mind to email them and say, look, if you want to send one over for review, I yeah. think that is good if you can send an adapter to do it, but I, I don't think it's worth yeah. it, to be honest. Um, and I, pr I prefer not to contact companies. I prefer them to come to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so whatever. It looks it looks good, uh, but it's not available in the UK. So hide your sort that out because we want it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, was there anything else that I, I needed to tell you about that one? No, I don't think so. No, but um, there you go. That's it. Uh, no, yeah, price. There's no, there's no word on price. I would guess if it's less than twelve hundred dollars, I'd be surprised. Do you think, in your opinion, these testers are getting better 
or do you think they're just changing form and tweaking like slight tweaks but they're all re re a lot many of them are relatively similar they all use the same technology so all the alkalinity ones or most of the alkalinity ones anyway use a ph probe yeah, and, yeah. and acid and they they increase the, the whatever um and most of the the ones that test several parameters yeah use a, a, a basically a posh hammer checker yeah so they all use the same technology they've not i not i'm not aware of any breakthroughs in testing that uh, that have uh, have been brought to the market that improves accuracy or uh, consistency or whatever um but that form factor of that looks pretty impressive because the, yeah. the current ones that do lots of things are the reefbot and the mastertronic and they're both they're big <laughs> whereas this looks much smaller and the yeah. the Kamoa, Kamoa are bringing one out the oh god what's it called reef master i think that's smaller than the, the Mastertronic and the Reefbot, but it's not as small as the Hydros. So that in itself is an improvement. And actually, the one thing with this that is worth mentioning, the, the cleaning vial, you can just pull it out to clean it. So oh, it's okay. Maintenance looks really easy on that, and that's yeah. good. So those are the improvements you're getting. Form factor, um, maintenance, uh, they, they put thought into that sort of thing. So they're not the technology isn't changing massively, but they're, they're making things better and more compact and all those sorts of things. So. Um, but yeah, still nothing, no breakthroughs as such, but I think that is really good. And all you want is something that tests magnesium, calcium, alkalinity, nitrate and phosphate. That's, that's wicked. Well, salinity, pH temperature, <laughs> but salinity is difficult to monitor, uh, regularly and, um, pH says you can just get a probe. So, but there you go. It, would... it loses calibration. And do you, I've, like, I don't think I've, you obviously dose calc, so you were measuring your pH, whereas I've, have, I've not measured my pH ever as far as I, I know. No, and I need to start. I don't measure it on the on the on the water box. I've got a feeling it's like high eights. <laughs> I just can't be bothered to keep calibrating it. And it's, and what am I going to yeah. do to change it? Nothing yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> might as well not know. Okay. Well, okay. Um, Tony's Coral says I bet they'll make it cost six to eight hundred dollars. If it costs six to eight hundred dollars, friggin' bargain. I would expect. It. Uh, he says that they like to beat the apex. How much is the apex in the UK? I think it's like twelve hundred quid. I don't know. I've never ever had anything to do with Trident. Um, sorry, Trident. No, me neither. I don't know anything about it. Someone, someone posted on Ultimate Reef earlier. It's eight hundred quid for Trident. Someone posted on Ultimate Reef earlier saying um, it would be good. to Tagged me and said, "Do you want to do a comparison?" Or it would be good to get a comparison of these three devices. It's like, well, first off, I'd need them to send it to me. But yeah, secondly, yeah. I don't have any Ep ne Neptune equipment. I never have had. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I, it, it's Neptune stuff is one of those things that it passes me by. It's massive in America, not so big in here, but because I don't have any and I never have any, have had any, I don't really pay much attention to it. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Oh, bollocks. I've just closed the wrong bloody tab. <laughs> Which good. is unfortunate because the second piece of news is <laughs> the Neptune Apex Trident. Ah. <sighs> Let me bring up the. Tablet. Yeah, I, I couldn't work out what was different about this. As in, I, I didn't look into it properly, so I don't know. I just, um, yeah. oh, I'm assuming it's testing nitrate and phosphate now, which you didn't correct. Do before, so it's called. Sorry, the, to, to, I, I misnamed it. The, the, it's called the, the Trident nitrate and phosphate. Oh, okay. Well, this says is this says Trident two NP, and actually, so I watched the videos on this. Uh, where did I watch? It? I can't remember. I watched it somewhere, and they were saying that it tests nitrate, phosphate, and alkalinity. Yeah, and I was like, "That's weird. Why? Why would it test alkalinity? Because the Trident already does that: calcium, alkalinity, magnesium. So why would you? Because a lot of people can end up with both. You don't want to test out twice. But on the website on saltwateraquarium.com, it looks like it doesn't test alkalinity. If you're in the chat and you know, um, let me know. But it would be weird if it did because it would just increase the price for no good reason. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, that it, yeah. So there's there's a new Trident coming out. Looks like the same form factor. A lot of people don't like the form factor, and you can 3D print an alternative case. So it would have been good if they updated that, but like I said, I've never used it. And it'll test it test It's not very space saving that case, is it? No, it looks cool, <laughs> and I think that's probably the the, the leading thing. But um, but yeah, it tests nitrate and phosphate, so you could have two tridents: the the normal one that does cal calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and then this one that does nitrate and phosphate, and then you've got everything you need basically. Yeah, apart from trace and all that sort of stuff. Um, and again, no word on price. That is coming out in May this year. Um, so there is a um, uh, uh, there is a uh, what's it called a, a release date on that. Uh, oh, and there was a Neptune DOS, a new Neptune DOS coming as well. I almost forgot. Um, that is slightly quieter than the last one. Exciting. There were a couple of other updates, um, but 
that it didn't see the neptune the trident that tests nitrogen phosphate that's cool because that's worth knowing about but a slightly quieter dosing pump with a couple of improvements it's like yeah great but yeah and particularly given i don't use neptune stuff oh they're, use, they're using the quiet drive technology now aren't they <laughs> that's, that's it, what it yeah. is that's why i remember that that's why i thought i couldn't work out why i was thinking of quiet drive earlier oh right. because they, they work with ecotech or they're, they're, they're owned by the they're same part company. Of the same yeah yeah, yeah. And obviously, Damn. Ecotech had the quiet drive technology. It's obviously transferred over to this now. I assume that's what's happened. I don't know. It's just a driver, so it's weird because it's the the, the on, when they did the the quiet drive on the the, the MP40s, yeah, and all the MP pumps, the hardware didn't change. They just updated the driver and it made it quieter. Yeah, I, that, I, not, that doesn't make any sense to me. But they explained how <laughs> they did it once. I think they, I well, I can't explain it, but they they did explain what it does. Um, it's something to do with like continuous motion. Like a, I think they explain like a merry ground. I don't know. I'm just talking. To, I, I, I literally don't know. And I probably watched it like five years ago. But there, there is a difference. And I thought, oh, I can see how the the two companies now that they are owned by the same people have obviously crossed crossed with each other and shared mm. some of the information. Yeah. So that's probably there what Telegram meant because the thing he posted, he said um, that they had they were reusing old technology, and I think that must be what he was talking about then. Well, so he said before that they that apparently um, GHL used to use the same dosing um, pumps on their maxi doser, oh, but, okay, I, but Neptune and I'm this is you know hearsay. I, I can't remember even out, but I think Neptune said to the company make them. We don't want you to sell them to GHL anymore. So GHL had to go away and make their own one. So now oh. they make their own ones. I don't know. But I don't I know. know. There's no it's, fact. Again, here. <laughs> there are no facts on this show and neptune stuff passing me by so yeah um but there we go that concludes the news if i can find my outro <laughs> and before you and i fall asleep live on so we're knackered on YouTube, <laughs> is there anything else you would like to to say no i i was thinking this a minute ago i knew you were gonna ask i i don't have anything else to say other than let me go to sleep <laughs> yeah, yeah. i can't believe it's nine o'clock i'm like i'm gonna go into bed now <laughs> mm, that's one thing so a couple of people like um uh, uh, uh hydros no coding it's all drop down menus like that and no. edward says proprietary reagents yes it does have proprietary reagents that's a good point because that's that's, that's notice, noticeable come on so. you played the second theme tune we don't still talking about we don't still talk about equipment after you play the second theme tune and now we have more news. <laughs> Maven uses proprietary reagents. I I find the Neptune stuff quite intimidating. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, because because of the coding. I, I, in this day and age, it surprises me that there's not really, really basic in, like systems for some of these products where it's, it literally should just be, you just click there. Like, you know, the Mobius app's pretty yeah. easy. They should all be as easy as that to use, but they just aren't. Mobius will end up doing all sorts of things and, and uh, can, they'll have controls, that sort of stuff. That's what's so good about the Refactory app is it's just so easy to use. Yeah. And that's why I, I loved it because it's just like the, the GHL one is quite complicated. Same for Neptune and various others. The refactor one's just dead easy, but their hardware is not as good as GHL hardware. And, you know, there's, there's always a trade off. I think it's getting to the stage, though, where that is becoming more important for people. So before, I don't think people were necessarily buying based on, on that. Whereas yeah. I think now people are going, how much trouble is this going to cause me? How, uh, how often yeah. is this going to disconnect? How often do you see what I mean? Yeah. And I, I bet before more and more people were really hardcore reefers. So they're prepared to invest their time. Yeah. Whereas a lot more people these days are not quite so completely obsessed. It takes over their life. So they yeah. want a bit more functionality, especially when everything in life is so easy. Your phone is a piece of cake to use. Yeah. And all that sort of stuff. But Ryan's going to fall asleep. So you need to. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> eyes are watery now. <laughs> Gary McConnell says there are two new water box aquariums out tomorrow. I will look out for that. And that can we'll... be next week's news. Yeah, don't talk about news or I'll have to play the jingle again. But yeah. anyway, thank you all for joining, guys. Ryan, thanks for coming along and uh, we will catch you all next week. See you later. Bye.